Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Fairy Tale. Money Can Make You Stronger. Chapter 41. When Mavis took Cheng Feng to a medicine pool on Tinlong Island and asked Cheng Feng to take off his shirt and lie on the stone, Cheng Feng had already secretly thought that something was wrong. The moment Mavis's fingers touched his back, Cheng Feng realized what kind of wrong thing he had done. Ah! A shrill scream sounded, frightening countless birds. Cheng Feng lay on the stone, holding the stone tightly with both hands. With his strong finger strength, even the stone was clasped in by Cheng Feng. You are so young, why are you so afraid of pain? Just be quiet. Mavis patted Cheng Feng's back, and Cheng Feng felt as if he had been pricked by a needle. Cheng Feng gritted his teeth and did not dare to scream. Only then did Mavis take action with satisfaction. It was obviously just a light touch with his fingers, but Cheng Feng felt as if his skin and flesh had been violently torn apart, and then he was constantly brushing his flesh and blood with a steel brush soaked in salt grains. Marrow. This kind of pain can kill people. Makarov looked at Cheng Feng, who was dripping with cold sweat, and at the bloody lines that appeared on his back as Mavis drew them. An idea flashed in his mind, and he looked at Mavis and asked uncertainly, the first generation sir, are you carving the lost magic pattern for Cheng Feng? That's right. Mavis said with great interest. This is also my first time to try it, but after the magic pattern is carved, Xiao Cheng Feng will have a place to store magic power in his body, which can indirectly increase his magic reserve. As for the actual use of the magic pattern at that time, you should understand the power. Makarov nodded. How could he not know? After the magic pattern is actually used, the magic pattern carver can gain nearly a hundred times the magic power in an instant. Sounds exaggerated, right? But in terms of consequences, it is also the reason why the magic pattern was lost. The first possibility is that the body cannot withstand the surge of magic power and explodes directly, leaving no bones left. The second possibility is that the body can withstand it, but is unable to control such terrifying magic power and cannot use it. In the end, the body is punctured by the surge of magic power, the magic power leaks, and eventually death occurs after all the magic power is lost. The third possibility is that it can be used as long as the body can withstand it, but once time passes, the gradually subsiding magic power will permanently take away the future potential of this magician, or destroy it. If you are lucky, you will be able to maintain your current level of magic power until your death. If you are unlucky, your strength will decline and you may not be as good as an average rookie magician. Such a serious situation naturally caused the magic pattern to be gradually lost. No one wanted to have such a dangerous thing carved on their body. But as Mavis said, this requires a certain amount of self-control on the part of a magician. If you don't use this magic pattern and simply use it as a prop to store magic power, then there will be no problem. Its function is the same as the pendant given to Cheng Feng by Makarov. But compared to the pendant, it is obvious that the reserve of the magic pattern is larger. After all the magic patterns were carved, Cheng Feng, who was almost exhausted, could feel that the magic power reserves of the magic patterns were almost three times the size of his existing magic power reserves. Cheng Feng only needs to inject his own magic power into the magic pattern, and the magic pattern will store Cheng Feng's magic power. When Cheng Feng needs to consume magic power, he can extract the magic power from the magic pattern, thus improving Cheng Feng's durability. Makarov looked at the circular magic pattern on Cheng Feng's back that was like a magic circle, and he felt relieved. Then he took action and sent the exhausted Cheng Feng to the medicine pool for soaking. Cheng Feng soaked in the medicine pool and slowly recovered his physical strength. At this point, the trip to Tenro Island can be said to be successfully completed. While Cheng Feng and the others were on Tinlong Island, the news that Cheng Feng was promoted to S-class magician finally passed the report of the Magic Council. This news also spread throughout the entire magician guild. In Blue Pegasus, Bob looked at the letter from the Magic Council, looked at the content above, held his face with one hand and chuckled the youngest S-class magician. It seems that Makarov is really a little monster was created. So fast. Yi also saw the letter, and was a little shocked and said, Cheng Feng is still very young, I feel like he is not yet an adult. I thought he would have to get familiar with it this year before he can be promoted next year. That's why I said he is a little monster. A little monster who can pass the S-level exam at the age of 14. 
Bob smiled and sighed, thinking in his heart that this junior is better than these old guys. But what they didn't know was that something even more shocking was about to happen next. For example, Laxus, Urza and Mirajan, the three future S-class wizards. They were only 16 or 17 years old when they obtained this identity. It was this situation that completely laid the foundation for Fairy Tale, the first magician's guild in the Kingdom of Fury. Not only Blue Pegasus, but also any magic guild registered with the Magic Council will receive this message that Cheng Feng has been promoted to an S-class mage. This is a process. Even if someone from other guilds advances to S-level, the letter will be delivered to the Fairy Tale Guild. Those guilds that had dealings with Cheng Feng for potions were naturally happy for Cheng Feng, while those who had a bad relationship with Cheng Feng looked as ugly as if they had eaten an Oreo. For example, Phantom Lord. Jose looked at the letter and angrily used magic power to crush it into ashes. You wanted to go against me, goblins, but you succeeded in irritating me. Jose roared, and evil magic permeated the entire guild almost instantly, making none of the guild members below dare to breathe loudly. No matter what the outside world said, Chen Feng and Makarov left Tinlong Island after finishing their rest. As for Mavis, she did not go with them, but continued to stay on Tenro Island. In her words, she had not slept well at the moment and needed a good rest. However, Mavis and Makarov have repeatedly warned that they must bring more desserts next time they come. Naturally, Makarov would not refuse the request of the first generation, but a ghost always likes to eat sweets, which makes people have the urge to complain. Cheng Feng was standing at the bow of the ship, continuously injecting his own magic power into the magic lines. At the same time, he was constantly absorbing magic power and recovering the consumed magic power. Great harvest. Not only did I obtain the fairy ball, but I also increased my magic power reserves. Cheng Feng looked in front of Shuishan Yis, and the corners of his mouth rose unconsciously, and since I have been promoted to S-class mage, there are some things that can be put on the agenda. Thinking of this, Cheng Feng clenched his fists and was full of confidence in his future plans. The year 779 was destined to be an extraordinary year. Since Cheng Feng was promoted to an S-class mage, Fairy Tail Guild's title of, Quest Madman, has finally been passed on to various guilds. At the same time, everyone also understands how valuable this title is. Compared with ordinary commissions, it is also possible to divide areas and selectively distribute them to many magic guilds within the range. However, most of the S-level commissions are extremely dangerous. Not only are they restricted to S-level wizards, but because they are difficult to complete, they are shared by many guilds. Under such a mechanism, many magic guilds found that their S-level commissions were rapidly decreasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Some S-level magicians even had a hard time completing an S-level commission. When they came back, the S-level commission had already been completed. Seven or eight portions are missing. Cheng Feng used his terrifying commission completion speed to successfully drive all the guilds into panic. Because they were horrified to discover that if they didn't speed up and still wanted to deal with the S-level commission slowly, what was waiting for them would be that Cheng Feng would snatch up all the tasks. For this reason, the Magic Council had to step forward and sent Yajma, who had a good relationship with Makarov, to come and talk to Makarov. Yujima was also very happy and came to Fairy Tail Guild to have a drink with Makarov. Don't you want to talk? So isn't it normal to talk for a few days? Therefore, Yajma fished openly. He drank with Makarov for two days, and then told Makarov about his arrival. In half a year, a total of 46 S-level commissions were completed, 31 monsters were defeated, 4 dark guilds, and 11 dark groups including bandits and cults. Yujima took a sip of wine looked at Makarov and said, Little Ma, Xiao Cheng Feng is under too much pressure, let him have a rest. Even if it is to make money, these tasks plus what he is currently doing in the pharmacy business, his net worth is already a little over a billion, right? There's no need to work so hard. I really told him this. Makarov smiled bitterly and said, but he is really not as rich as you think. His receiving magic and heroic soul is different from ordinary receiving magic. Ordinary receiving magic is to defeat monsters and receive them. Quote. Yujima looked shocked. Yes, you got it right. 
Although this kind of receiving magic is highly safe, it is extremely expensive, so this is why Cheng Feng continues to make money. But he is strong enough now, right? Still working so hard. Yujima was also speechless. Thinking about him, although he is not strong, he lives a pretty good life. Why doesn't this little guy know how to enjoy life? Personal pursuits are different. Makarov raised his glass to Yajma and said, but Cheng Feng and I have seen through it all. It is estimated that if he continues to be busy for a while, he will indeed need to take a rest. Yajma smiled bitterly. Is that a break? That is, except for those troublesome century-old missions, the current S-level commissions are almost cleared. But forget it, since everyone said so, he can go back. With this news, Yajma returned to the Magic Council. As for Cheng Feng, what Yajima thought was the same. The general S-level commissions were basically cleared, and some were also firmly grasped by other guilds. Even if they could not be completed, let's take it all first and talk later. This also led to Cheng Feng finally being able to relax. Finally, it's come to this. Cheng Feng was lying on the bed in the loft, looking at the game interface in front of him. With the final draw of cards and the selection of the last purple card, Cheng Feng's deck was completely complete. Melee deck. Jiro, Red, Escanor, Red, Sun Goku, Red, Saitama, Red, Namikaze Minato, Gold, Edward, Gold. Swordsmanship deck. Zoro, Gold, Inuyasha, Gold, Artoria, Red, Kenpachi, Gold, Kenshin, Red, Kanzaki, Kaori, Red. Range deck. Masaka Makoto, Red, Megaman, Purple, Tatsumaki, Red, Enel, Gold, Uchiha Madara, Red, Shirai, Kuroko, Purple. Healing Deck. Elizabeth, Purple, Tsunade, Gold, La, Gold, Inoue, Orihime, Purple, Jorno, Giovanna, Gold, Higashikata, Josuke, Gold. This is the deck that Cheng Feng has assembled so far. Of course, there are many alternative cards, such as the King of Kai who almost kicked the finale. If necessary, Cheng Feng can replace it instantly without delaying use. In order to collect these cards, Cheng Feng spent a total of 3.6 billion J in Terra funds. If it weren't for the fact that the S-level commission fee was not less than 1 million J, plus the large number of dark guilds and cults that had been cleared alone, Cheng Feng would not have made so much money so quickly. The deck is assembled. But in this way, the money Cheng Feng had on hand was completely exhausted. If it weren't for the pharmacy business, Cheng Feng felt that in the next period of time, even if he wanted to go out to work, he would have to consider the cost of the journey. Name. Cheng Feng, Green, Plus. Level. 30, Full. Body. 163 plus, 677. Strength. 164 plus, 701. Sensitivity. 164 plus, 697. Skill. Receive magic. Equipment, Higher Inmaru, Philosopher's Stone. Card Slot, Jiro, Red, Escanor, Red, Sun Goku, Red, Saitama, Red, Namikaze Minato, Gold, Edward, Gold. The second transfer requires 1,000 blue cards and 3,000 spirit stones. Cheng Feng took a look at the remaining cards, counted them, and then merged all the green cards into blue cards, creating more than 1,300 blue cards. The next moment, Cheng Feng once again enjoyed the comfort of promotion. After enjoying it, Cheng Feng looked at his attributes. Name. Cheng Feng, Blue. Level. 30. Body. 363 plus, 677. Strength. 364 plus, 701. Sensitivity. 364 plus, 697. At this moment, Cheng Feng, even without using the power of the cards, could defeat Natsu and Grey just by relying on his own physical strength. But Cheng Feng knows very well that his own state is not that strong yet, that is, it is the same level as Urza at the beginning of the plot. If you want to ensure a stable battle reception state, you can fight Makarov at 4 or 6, him at 4, and Makarov at 6. The full burst state can reach the level of crushing the Holy Ten, but it only lasts for more than 10 seconds. It can only be used as a trump card and cannot be easily revealed. Not enough. If he really didn't know the powerful combat power of the fairy tale world, such a life would be enough to sink Cheng Feng. However, neither Zirf nor the Black Dragon Acknowledgia can be hostile to Cheng Feng now. If you want to be stable, you must surpass them. Therefore, he must continue to become stronger. Cheng Feng, thank you for this mission. Mirajan patted Cheng Feng on the back, then took Elfman and Lissana to hand in the mission. 
Cheng Feng yawned, walked to the counter with some leisure, looked at Makarov who was still drinking, and asked Makarov, Grandpa President, is there any news? Some news, but are you sure you want to go? Makarov glanced at Cheng Feng and said, you'd better not mess with that thing. I just want to see my current strength. I'm not that stupid. Cheng Feng smiled and said, and anyway, I'm quite free now, right? Makarov pondered for a moment, and it was indeed as Cheng Feng said, he was quite free recently, doing some potion extra money when he had nothing to do, and he didn't do many S-level commissions. Occasionally, he just helped his companions in the guild to complete small commissions. It was indeed too idle. Okay. According to the information I asked for you, that thing should be in the north, in the destroyed town called Prague. Thank you, Grandpa President. I'll go take a look and come back in a week at most. After getting the information he wanted, Cheng Feng laughed, then said hello to Makarov and left the guild. Then, he received Sun Wukong's card, used the sky dance technique, and flew directly to the north. The sky dance technique is the reason why Cheng Feng was able to complete so many S-level commissions so quickly before. Under its full burst, Cheng Feng's flying speed is no weaker than that of a normal civil airliner. When Cheng Feng left the guild, Urza and the others also completed their work and returned to the guild. At lunchtime, Urza didn't see Cheng Feng, and asked Makarov, President, where is Cheng Feng? Why didn't I see him? He went out for something. Makarov waved his hand and said, go to the Prague ruins in the north and take a look and come back. Prague. Where is that? Urza was a little confused. But Gray, who was eating on the other side, suddenly spit out a mouthful of rice, spraying Natsu and Happy in the face. Gray is bullying. Happy was about to cry, and his fish was covered with Gray's saliva. Stinky ice cube, do you want to fight? Natsu was also sprayed in the face, and said to Gray angrily. But this time Gray ignored Natsu at all. He coughed and drank water, and then said to Makarov anxiously, President, you said Cheng Feng went to Prague. Oh, you know that place. Yeah. Gray nodded, and then said nothing more, and ran out without eating. Wait for me. Stinky Ice Cube, I'm not done with you. Natsu also chased after him relentlessly. Natsu, wait for me. Happy looked at the half fish in his hand, and put the fish down despite his heartache, flapped his wings, and chased after Natsu. In this way, Gray took Natsu and Happy and boarded the train to the north. Gray was worried all the way, and Natsu wanted to ask what was wrong, but once he got on the train, he became listless and lay on the seat completely without any energy. As for Happy, it was enough to have dried fish to eat, the kitten didn't have so many thoughts. Cheng Feng galloped all the way, and it only took him more than an hour to reach the north. After that, he found someone to ask for directions and was delayed for a while. It only took him more than two hours in total to reach the Prague ruins. It's really here. Cheng Feng looked at the huge ice blocks standing under the wind and snow, and the monsters in the ice blocks, and couldn't help but sigh, this place is really remote. The destruction caused by Dai Lion La back then caused many cities and villages in the north to be destroyed. It also caused the northerners to go all the way south. This also resulted in the fact that the information that Dai Lion La was frozen was never passed on. If Cheng Feng hadn't been in this world for so many years, his original memory about the plot, except for some relatively big things, could no longer remember some details. Otherwise, there would be no need to entrust Makarov to go to the Magic Council to inquire, and he would slowly do it himself. If you search around, you'll probably find it already. It's just past October now, and the temperature has just turned cooler. It's pretty good in the south, but it's already snowing here. Stepping on the snow, Cheng Feng walked all the way to the ice block where Dai Lianla was frozen. Reaching out and stroking the ice, Cheng Feng could not only feel the extreme cold, but also feel the powerful magic in the ice. Uru should have had the strength of the Holy Ten before he was alive, but even so, he could not defeat Dai Lianla head on. These created demons are really strong. Cheng Feng stroked the ice cube and said with a sigh, it's been such a long time difference, and I don't know if Dai Lianla is still alive. Let's give it a try. As he spoke, Cheng Feng suddenly waved his arm, and the snow on the ground was swept away in an instant, revealing the land below. Cheng Feng took out a metal rod from his backpack, and then drew a large formation formation that was as wide as one person in the open space. 
After carving it, Cheng Feng took the metal rod back, and then threw a large number of things containing various materials into the refining array. Although I haven't seen you in person, I think I can use the ice you turned into to replicate your body. Cheng Feng walked to the ice, received Edward, clapped his hands, and then pressed them on the ice. Break down. Alchemy began to destroy the structure of the ice, and the huge ice began to slowly melt even in such cold conditions. The flowing water seemed to be attracted and flowed into the refining formation carved by Cheng Feng. About there. Cheng Feng looked at the water flowing in the formation, chuckled, turned around and walked to the formation, clapped his hands and placed them on the formation. Forbidden refining, refining the human body, I don't know if it will be successful in this world. As Cheng Feng took a deep breath, Cheng Feng immediately activated the formation formation. With the activation of the refining formation, those carefully carved lines instantly burst out with dazzling light, shining like bright stars in the night sky. And in the outer circle, streaks of pale electric light danced like silver snakes, constantly flashing a heart-stopping cold light. In this mysterious and spectacular refining formation, countless materials seemed to feel some kind of powerful gravity, and they gathered together at an astonishing speed. They are like a group of summoned elves, jumping, spinning and merging with each other happily. At the same time, the material that had originally melted into a liquid state was also involved in it like a torrent, blending with other materials. This process is like a gorgeous symphony performance. Various elements resonate harmoniously in the melody, and together they compose a beautiful and moving movement. Without a soul, I only need a body. Make it for me. Following Chang Feng's words, the thick, ink-black solution made up of countless materials began to roll and stir violently, as if a huge monster with a ferocious face was trapped and struggling in it. Strong and dazzling electric light shot out in all directions, stinging so hard that people could hardly open their eyes. At the same time, waves of creepy, shrill and horrifying wails suddenly sounded in Cheng Feng's ears. The sound actually sounded like the inhuman wails of countless wronged ghosts who were being tortured. And at this moment, in the middle of the dark and deep weird solution, a slender arm as white as snow suddenly broke out of it, and quickly stretched out of the solution at an unimaginable speed. Outside. Before Cheng Feng could react, in the next second, another beautiful head with dark, neat short hair, eyes tightly closed, came out of the water immediately after. Cheng Feng became more and more determined and stared intently at what was happening in front of him. At this moment, the originally rich and deep black solution was rapidly decreasing at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the outline of the woman's figure at its inner core became increasingly clear and complete. Finally, not long after, a perfect, lifelike female body was completely displayed in front of Cheng Feng inside the formation. However, the only thing that makes Cheng Feng a little regretful is that after the Ulu body was completed, it did not look like a naked body. Jackets, trousers, and all the necessary clothing were present, which made Cheng Feng a little suspicious. Did he make a mistake in forming the formation? He didn't include any materials related to clothing. The electric light slowly dissipated, and a young, beautiful, and very capable-looking woman with short hair lay in the formation. Cheng Feng looked at himself safe and sound and smiled slightly. His idea is correct, the taboo formed from the human body is the soul. In addition, he has the philosopher's stone, so it is not difficult to simply refine it into a body. But this is not the end, it is the beginning. Carrying Ulu's body to the edge of the ice, Cheng Feng wiped off the original formation, then took out the metal rod and began to slowly and firmly cover the bodies of Dai Lianla and Ulu in a huge building. In the alchemy array. Cheng Feng painted this alchemy array very carefully and it was also extremely time-consuming. It took Cheng Feng three hours to complete the alchemical formation. Looking at his masterpiece, Cheng Feng clapped his hands directly and pressed them on the alchemy array without any hesitation. In the next moment, I saw Cheng Feng continuously sending his powerful magic power into the alchemy array. The originally peaceful alchemy array seemed to suddenly come to life and was completely activated in an instant. In an instant, dazzling light suddenly burst out, intertwined with the surging magic power, and shot straight into the sky like a huge and blazing torrent. In the blink of an eye, the layers of thick and dense dark clouds in the sky were unable to withstand the impact of this terrifying force, and they were all pierced through. 
For a time, the sun shone on the earth without any hindrance, and the originally dark and gloomy world instantly became brighter. And in the cloud hole that was penetrated, a vast blue sky as pure and deep as a gem was revealed. Stop. At this moment, a shrill scream sounded. Cheng Feng didn't look back, but just by listening to the voice, he knew it was Gray's voice. After more than five hours, Gray and Natsu finally caught up with Cheng Feng, but as soon as they arrived, they saw the alchemy array being activated. Gray, who didn't understand why, immediately wanted to stop Cheng Feng, but his hands were just about ready to attack. In the alchemy formation, Wulu's body, which was originally lying lifeless on the ground, began to float slowly. It was as if there was an invisible force lifting him up, causing him to gradually leave the ground. At the same time, the surface of the ice began to emit a faint light. These lights were just specks of light at first, but as time went by, they became brighter and brighter, like stars twinkling in the night sky. Each point of light is like a delicate tie, gently wrapping around Ulu's body, tightly connecting him to the ice. These bonds are not static, but flow slowly like water, giving people a sense of agility. Sometimes they flicker and sometimes dim, seeming to convey some mysterious message or energy. Wulu's body was trembling slightly under the influence of this wonderful force, as if he was undergoing a baptism and transformation. This scene made Grey, who was about to attack, instantly stunned. Looking at the figure floating in the formation, that familiar face, Grey felt his whole body trembling constantly, and tears were constantly gathering in his eyes. Wu. Lu. With an almost murmuring voice, Gray's legs weakened and he knelt down directly in the snow, tears dripping continuously. Gray, what's wrong with you? Natsu looked at Gray's strange behavior and then looked at Cheng Feng in front of him. For a moment, he felt as if he was about to grow a brain. Don't mess with me. At this moment, Cheng Feng's voice suddenly sounded. With his back to the two people and the cat, Cheng Feng said calmly, the ice on Leon's body seems to be a person. I am using my alchemy to peel off the ice to see if I can save this person, so don't it's easy to fail if you bother me, do you understand? Huh. What about the art of repairing tatters? Natsu was outspoken and told the people in the guild the other names for alchemy. I see. Gray wiped away his tears, stood up, and said to Natsu and Happy, Natsu, Happy, that person is my master. Now is a critical moment, so I ask you to help Cheng Feng. Don't let other external is it okay if factors interfere with Cheng Feng. Natsu was stunned. This was the first time he heard a hint of pleading from Gray. At this moment, although the two of them were not getting along well, Natsu was not someone who couldn't tell the difference. After punching Gray hard, Natsu said to Gray, of course, we are fairy tale. Like, Happy also raised his paw and responded. Gray nodded and said softly, thank you. The two of them quickly stood on the left and right of Cheng Feng's position, and Happy also flew into the air and looked down at the entire earth. The group waited silently, and was also vigilant, and would never let anyone interfere with Cheng Feng. As the alchemy array continued to operate, countless stars with faint light flashed across the sky like meteors, and poured into Uru's huge body. Each starlight seemed to carry endless mysterious power, merging with Uru's body, making his already powerful aura become more and more rich and deep. Finally, after all the starlight was completely integrated, Uru's body began to slowly fall, and finally landed steadily on the solid ground. At this moment, Cheng Feng, who had been concentrating on controlling the alchemy array, also slowly stood up. His face revealed a tired but satisfied expression, and he exhaled deeply, as if releasing the pressure that had been accumulated in his heart for a long time. Did it, succeed? Gray ran over immediately, his voice still trembling a little. I think so. Cheng Feng said, I've tried my best. Natsu and Happy also came over and looked at Ulu lying on the ground with curiosity. Under the gaze of the three people and the cat, Ulu, who was originally lying quietly, trembled slightly, and the eyeball under his eyelids also moved. Seeing this scene, Gray almost jumped up excitedly, but he covered his mouth tightly, fearing that he would make too much noise and disturb Ulu. But obviously, Gray's worry was wrong. Ulu's movements became louder and louder, his fingers trembled slightly, and his eyelids trembled. Finally, under Gray's constant call in his heart, his eyelids opened and Ulu opened his eyes. His mouth moved, and a slightly hoarse voice sounded, You shouldn't save me, he's not dead yet. 
At this moment, Ulu was resurrected, and her soul entered a new body, which she could not control very well. She was a little desperate, because she had not completely consumed Dai Lionra's life. At this moment, Dai Lionra was out of trouble, who could stop it? Crack. Accompanied by Ulu's voice, a crisp shattering sound was heard, and the ice that had trapped Dai Lionla was covered with cracks. In Gray's horrified eyes, the ice on his head shattered, and a terrifying roar resounded through the sky. Run. Ulu struggled to stand up, looked at Gray with some worry, and stretched out his hand to Gray. At this moment, Gray seemed to let go of something. Sure enough, I have figured it out over the years. Gray looked at Ulu and said with a smile. I will deal with the trouble I caused myself. Ulu, it's really great to see you alive. After that, Gray rushed out with a brisk step, took a stance, crossed his hands, and the surging magic power burst out instantly. Bang. But before he could start, Cheng Feng came over and punched Gray on the head. The magic power that had burst out was instantly beaten back by Cheng Feng. Gray squatted down in pain, covering the big bump on his head, with a look of collapse on his face. This guy is obviously going to surpass the S-Class monster. You two guys who haven't become S-Class wizards yet, get out of here. Cheng Feng said as he picked up Gray and threw him next to Natsu. Then he said to Natsu, Natsu, you and Happy take these two guys away, leave this to me. Can you handle it? Natsu helped Gray up and asked Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng's mouth corners slightly raised, revealing a faint smile and the sun poured down like a waterfall, just falling on Cheng Feng. In an instant, Cheng Feng was enveloped by dazzling golden light, like a god of war descending from the sky. This warm sunlight seemed to have magical power, and it easily dispelled the biting cold brought by the raging blizzard around. At the same time, Cheng Feng's body seemed to be ignited, and an indescribably powerful magic burst out. This magic was like a surging torrent, and it was like an awakened ancient beast, sweeping in all directions with endless power and scorching heat. The air seemed to burn wherever he passed, and the snow on the ground melted quickly, forming streams that flowed past. Cheng Feng raised a finger and said in an extremely arrogant tone, Noon has arrived, and I am the only one in the world. Take that, Escanor. The next moment, Cheng Feng's body swelled, and the clothes on his body were torn apart. Call. As the first flame rose, Cheng Feng's exposed body surface quickly burned. The flame of the sun. Cheng Feng looked at Dai Lianla, who still had his feet out of trouble, and said calmly, Holy Sword, Escanor. The knife fell calmly, as if nothing had happened. But the next moment, Gray and the others were horrified to find that a huge gap suddenly burst out in Dai Lianla's body, almost cutting Dai Lianla in half. The splattered blood turned Dai Lianla's roar into a howl. Dai Lianla looked at the human bug in front of him in disbelief. When did bugs become so powerful? The sun has no mercy. Cheng Feng raised a thick finger, and on the fingertip, a fireball as dazzling as the sun was generated. As Cheng Feng gently threw it out, the fireball fell on Dai Lianla. Boom. Ouch. Ouch. In an instant, the extremely solid layer of ice on Dai Lianla's body completely melted away. At the same time, an extremely hot flame swept in like a surging torrent, directly pulling Dai Lian's whole body and wrapping it tightly. Under the burning of the raging fire, Dai Lianla screamed in pain, and her body became charred and crispy beyond recognition in the blink of an eye. At this moment, the originally solid and hard earth seemed to be overwhelmed, and in an instant it turned into a sea of hot and bubbling lava. The billowing heat wave continued to rise, and Dai Lianla's feet were gradually being swallowed by this terrible magma. He struggled desperately, but to no avail. As time passed, his struggle stopped and his head hung down. It's so boring. Cheng Feng shook his head, released Escanor's reception, and then looked at Ulu. Although Dai Lianla is not dead, it is obvious that under Uru's absolute ice, Dai Lianla has consumed too much life force. So when Cheng Feng collided with Dai Lianla, who seemed to be very strong, he discovered that Dai Lianla's basic strength was as weak as an S-class monster. Cheng Feng understands what's going on, but others don't. Even Wulu only knows that she is constantly consuming Dai Lianla's life force. As for how much strength Dai Lianla has left, she has no idea. Her memory still remains that Dai Lianla tore off her legs with one blow. Among the terrifying strength of the split. 
In such a comparison, Cheng Feng could easily kill Dai Lianla instantly. Even Wu Lu was shocked by such strength. Not to mention Grey. The shadow of his childhood, and even the motivation of hatred, were so easily solved by Cheng Feng. Such a gap simply made him doubt his life. The only one who couldn't recover was probably Natsu. He looked at the burning Dai Lianla, swallowed his saliva, looked at the sun fire, and said with a little greed, Is it delicious? I want to try it. Random. Cheng Feng waved his hand and said with waning interest. Natsu immediately let out an excited exclamation, ran forward, opened his mouth and inhaled, and the fire of the sun was directly sucked into his mouth. His ha, ha ha, it's so hot, but it tastes so good. Natsu was like eating hot glutinous rice balls, they were hot and hissing for a while, but he couldn't bear to let go. He kept rolling them in his mouth for a while, and then he swallowed the sun fire with satisfaction. Cheng Feng was also shocked when he saw Natsu swallowing all the sun fire. Then he shook his head with a wry smile. After all, he was the protagonist, so it was no surprise that he could do this. Soon, the fire of the sun went out, and Dai Lianla was burned into coke. A hot wind blew by, and it immediately turned into powder and scattered on the earth. It's over. Wulu was helped by Grey to stand up, looked at Deliola who turned into powder and said, but, is it too much of a fuss? Cheng Feng took a look at the scene where the surrounding area was almost turned into magma and was cooling. He shrugged and said, it doesn't matter. It was abandoned long ago. No matter how much it is destroyed, it doesn't matter. 2. Wulu sighed, looked at Cheng Feng and said, thank you for saving my life. Wulu didn't say much. She knew exactly how Cheng Feng saved her. So she knew very well that this matter could only be kept in the stomachs of the two of them and could not be spread easily. As for her resurrection, it can only be assumed that she was still alive in the first place and was stripped out by Cheng Feng's alchemy. Otherwise, those in the Magic Council will never give up. Any ideas for the future? Cheng Feng looked at Wu Lu and asked. Hearing Cheng Feng's words, Grey immediately spoke and said to Wu Lu, Wu Lu, come to our guild. I still need your guidance. Wu Lu chuckled lightly, raised his hand and touched Grey's head and said, you have already walked your own path and are a real man. You no longer need my guidance. Seeing Gray's anxious look, Wulu smiled slightly, but now, I don't seem to have anywhere to go. Gray, you have grown up. Does your guild still accept people? Accept people. Accept them as people. Gray quickly said, the president is very easy to talk to. You must come to us, Wulu. Wulu touched Gray's head and then looked at Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng nodded and said, you are welcome to join. The group of people left this place that was completely in ruins, got on the return train, and returned to Magnolia. The movement here also attracted the attention of many people. For example, the Magic Council. Another example is Gray's senior brother, Leon. According to the development of the plot, at this moment he is still gathering people who have been persecuted by Dai Lianla to form a cult, hoping to unblock Dai Lianla, thereby completely defeating Dai Lianla and surpassing Uru. But when the situation here reached Leon's ears, Leon felt bad. Because Dai Lianla has been completely solved. As to why they know this. Because although Dai Lianla was burned to ashes, his big feet sank into the magma below and survived. It is said that these carbonized feet were taken away by the Magic Council, and they probably wanted to research something. Then, the cult established by Leon fell apart before it even started. Dai Leon is dead, so what are they busy with? Might as well go home and farm. Oh, by the way, I also want to thank the person who solved Dai Lianla. Cheng Feng, Grey, Fairy Tale. Leon sat on the throne in despair, looking at the few people who were left by his side at the end and said, You think, can there really be such strong people in the guild? Of course, these are not what Cheng Feng expected, he is waiting for someone, a woman. Three days later, a girl with long black hair, side bangs, a white top and a yellow belt around her waist came to the ruins. The arc of time was activated, and in time, a familiar face appeared on her crystal ball. Uru. When Uru joined Fairy Tail, the process was smoother than expected. Although Uru's new body now makes her nearly wholly ten strength basically gone. But fortunately, when Cheng Feng made her body, he used part of her original body ice, so Ulu's talent was not lost. 
After just a week of training, Uru's strength was already able to defeat the current Grey. Because of this, Grey was depressed for a few days. Of course, Cheng Feng and the others were very tight-lipped about Ulu's resurrection, so everyone didn't know about it and just thought Ulu was an ordinary magician. Makarov could see something, but seeing Grey no longer look like before, with that bright smile, Makarov couldn't bear to say anything. They are all their own children, so it doesn't matter if they are pampered a little. He just pulled Cheng Feng and told him not to tell anyone about this matter. Cheng Feng is not stupid, so he naturally won't say it. But after this matter is over, Cheng Feng also has one thing to consider. That's the thing about the house. Cheng Feng has always lived in the attic of the guild. At that time, Cheng Feng did not have any extra money to consider the issue of accommodation. No matter how much money he had, he would invest it in Krypton gold. But now, the deck has been temporarily completed. Although we still need to continue to invest in experience cards, prop cards, and bond cards in the future, there is no need to be in such a hurry and we can take our time. Makarov also discovered this, so he was ready to drive Cheng Feng out. After all, even Mirajan and the three of them have gone out to rent a house, and Cheng Feng has always been stuck in the guild, which is really inappropriate. More importantly, Cheng Feng is not short of money either. The cost of the pharmaceutical order alone was enough for Cheng Feng to buy a mansion. However, for Cheng Feng, luxury houses are too troublesome. Although the space is large, he still finds it troublesome to clean it up. He can't buy a mansion and then pay someone to clean it, right? For someone like Cheng Feng who has to go out to work from time to time and doesn't have much time to live here, is he paying someone to live here? Therefore, Cheng Feng, who was kicked out of the guild by Makarov and was looking for a new residence, undoubtedly rejected the idea of a mansion. After contacting the Magnolia Chamber of Commerce, Cheng Feng picked through the houses they provided and quickly selected a house. It is a two-story building of 200 square meters. It is not too far from Fairy Tale, and it only takes 10 minutes to walk there. What's more, it's a bit worn out and very cheap. I'm really lucky to be able to directly obtain the property rights for 2 million J. Cheng Feng shook the property ownership certificate in his hand and came to a dilapidated house with several holes in the roof with a smile. It looks shabby, but it's cheap. If you think about it, in Cheng Feng's previous life, you directly bought a two-story building of more than 200 square meters for less than 100,000, and the land ownership is still yours. Cheng Feng would naturally not miss such a bargain. And the house is broken. Do you really think that the repairing skills he has trained over the years were in vain? I bought some repair materials and the total cost was less than 20,000 J. Then throw it into the alchemy array, and the alchemy is activated. In less than 5 minutes, Cheng Feng replaced the two-story building with a stone and wood structure with a structure of reinforced concrete and bluestone. The interior European and American bookstore style decoration was also replaced by Cheng Feng's preferred cream style. As for some practical items inside, although they are not available in this world, there are more practical magic props. Of course, it's a little expensive, but it's really comfortable to use. They all bought it to be their long-term residence, so naturally they will be as comfortable as they want. It seemed like I had been busy for a long time, but with the help of alchemy and the acceleration of the Philosopher's Stone, it took less than four hours. The originally dilapidated two-story building instantly turned into a brand new residence. Afterwards, Cheng Feng thought about the operations of those in the guild, and then bought a more advanced magic lock. It is somewhat similar to the fingerprint lock in Cheng Feng's cognition. It requires the permission of the original owner to open the magic lock and open the door. Otherwise, it will not be easy to get in. All right. Cheng Feng clapped his hands and looked at the brand new door before pushing it open and walking in. The interior of the entire house is painted with low saturation colors such as milk coffee and milk white. The overall space has a rounded and soft texture, giving a gentle and healing feeling, making people feel like home as soon as they enter. That's right. When moving to a new home, let's start the fire first and then take a shower. Cheng Feng closed the door and locked it, then rolled up his sleeves and accepted, Sanji, Yukihira Soma, and Komatsu. The three chefs took it in. Cheng Feng hummed and walked into the kitchen on the first floor. Charcoal grilled Barcelona front leg, baked artemisia with fragrant pine nut butter, 
pan-fried dreamy fish fillet, and another side of rice, perfect. With the ability of three chefs, Cheng Feng raised the corners of his mouth as he looked at the delicious and delicious dishes in front of him, preparing to go to the restaurant to have a good taste of his craftsmanship. With two hands in each hand, Cheng Feng carried the food and walked towards the restaurant. When passing by the living room, more than a dozen pairs of eyes were sitting on the sofa, looking at Cheng Feng who was carrying the food like hungry wolves. Cheng Feng, are you too busy? Did you see hallucinations? Cheng Feng shook his head, turned around and ran towards the kitchen. Don't move. You're still running. Everyone, come together. Come on. Stay something. Love. I caught the fish. I refused, but they didn't listen to me. I'm hugging you. Everyone, come on. A wave of wolves pounced on food, and Cheng Feng was directly surrounded by a group of people. The things in his hands were almost gone in the blink of an eye. Cheng Feng looked at Mirajan who was hugging him tightly, and said helplessly, that's enough for you. I've locked it up, how did you get in? Love, the second floor window is unlocked. Happy raised his paw and said as if taking credit. Ahem, didn't I hear that you have moved to a new home? Everyone is ready to come over and entertain you. Makarov coughed a few times and said. Cheng Feng looked at Makarov with resentment. If you didn't hold Barcelona's front legs in your hands to chew on, your credibility would be higher. The little food Cheng Feng made was enough for him alone, and there was nothing left for everyone else. Then, Cheng Feng was rushed to the kitchen, and sorted out the various ingredients they brought, and soon a large table of delicious food was served. Cheng Feng was finally able to eat. Although I was a little depressed, I felt warm in my heart when I saw the people on the dining table chatting with each other. At least, at this time, he is not alone, he has a group of family members. After eating and drinking, Makarov remembered and handed a commission order to Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng opened it and took a look, slightly stunned. Because this is a mission to defeat the Dark Guild. And this is a commission that other guilds are preparing to cooperate with Fairy Tail. They want you to help. Makarov looked at Cheng Feng and said, Of course, if you want to refuse, you can refuse. I can call others to help. Cheng Feng shook his head and then said, I will accept this commission. If it were other guilds, Cheng Feng wouldn't be too interested. After all, this kind of cooperative mission is a bit troublesome. However, the mission of this collaboration is Mermaid Heal. Therefore, Cheng Feng is very interested and also wants to see how Kagura is doing now. After a natural sleep, Cheng Feng stretched. Although the new bed is more comfortable than the crib in the guild's attic, Cheng Feng misses that crib even more. You really recognize the bed. Cheng Feng smiled helplessly. After washing up and walking up the stairs to the first floor, Cheng Feng had a quick bite and was ready to go out and meet up at Mermaid Heel to complete the commission together. But as soon as he opened the door, Cheng Feng saw Mirajan standing at the door of his home. Seeing Cheng Feng come out, Mirajan waved towards Cheng Feng and said, Cheng Feng, I told the president, we are together. Mira, are you going too? Cheng Feng was stunned for a moment, then nodded and said, Then let's go together, it will be over as soon as possible. Cheng Feng did not refuse. After all, he did not care about the so-called commission. He just wanted to see how Kagura was doing. As for commissioning, unless a magician with holy ten strength comes out, Cheng Feng basically has no pressure to push horizontally. Seeing Cheng Feng agree, Mirajan also laughed, and murmured in her heart, I heard that the mermaid heal is all female magicians, and this time I asked Cheng Feng to help by name, which is definitely not good. I am still smart. With me here, there is absolutely no way Cheng Feng will be abducted. The two set off together. Originally, Cheng Feng planned to fly directly there, but Mirajan's magic power was not enough to support her across such a long distance. So with no other choice, the two boarded a passenger ship and set off for Mermaid Heel. I don't know if he was full from sleep. After Cheng Feng got on the boat, he only yawned a few times but did not sleep. The passenger ship traveled very quickly, and after traveling along the coastline of the Kingdom of Fury for nearly a day, it arrived at the city where Mermaid Heel's guild was located. Mermaid Heel, known as the Dancing Queen of the Sea, all members are women. When Cheng Feng and Mirajan came to Mermaid Heel, looking at the women of various styles, Mirajan was glad for the first time that she came with them. Because when they entered the guild, Cheng Feng was immediately surrounded. 
Mirajan struggled to escape the encirclement with Cheng Feng, and Cheng Feng also met the president of Mermaid Heel. Cheng Feng was also very curious about her. After all, in the plot, this mysterious president never appeared. In the later period, it was Kagura who took on the responsibility of the president. Some people speculated that he was a man and that the entire guild was his harem. But it was only after Cheng Feng met the real person that he realized that he had overthought things. The president of Mermaid Heel is an old woman with no characteristics. The only thing that can be remembered is her old age and weak body. After Cheng Feng communicated with him, he realized that this old man was really old, 118 years old. With such a person coming, it's no wonder that the big devil is not involved in the plot. If something really happens, who can take the responsibility? The old man is quite amiable and gentle. After communicating with her about the commission situation, the old man called the partner for this commission. A fat girl and a long black straight girl. This is Risley, and this is Kagura. These two are fairy tale members, Mirajan, and S-class mage Cheng Feng. Risley, Kagura, you must obey the arrangements and follow the command, do you understand? The old man made an introduction, which made both parties get to know each other. Kagura. Cheng Feng looked at the long, straight black girl with a bow tied on her head, and her eyes lit up. Kagura looked at Cheng Feng, nodded towards Cheng Feng and said, hello. Cheng Feng smiled when he looked at Kagura, who was polite but had an air of repulsion. Right. Kagura was still young at that time and didn't remember much. She even forgot about Urza, the person who helped her avoid the disaster. How could she still remember Cheng Feng, the person she had known in her childhood? But it doesn't matter. Coming to see Kagura is this body's obsession. It is also a trace of nostalgia for the last survivor of Rosemary Village. After seeing it, I felt relieved. Next, all that is left is to destroy the R system and completely end the obsession with this body. Cheng Feng can also truly master this body. The only annoying thing is that before the construction of the Tower of Heaven was completed, there was probably some kind of covering device. Until now, there is no way to find its specific location. As for asking Urza, that stupid woman was deceived all over the place. Like Grey, she was a silent person. Cheng Feng no longer wanted to get information from them. But now he can't find it. Cheng Feng is irritated and can only take one step at a time. After all, with the support of strength, no matter how hard Jellal tried, Cheng Feng could dismantle the whole thing in one breath. Besides, Urza's line is unavailable, but Cheng Feng has another line. However, the bait has been laid out, so I don't know if the fish can still take the bait. The dark guild we are attacking this time is the water of the spring. They are hiding on a small island, and their known number of members has reached more than 30. The fat Risley controlled the ship and said to Cheng Feng and Mirajan at the same time, the more difficult ones to deal with are, Secret Spring, Blaze and Devil, Leon. One of them uses the relatively rare heavy water magic, and the other uses just like you, our two guilds use receiving magic. Wait a minute, you said that guy's name is Demon. Mirajan suddenly interrupted Risley and said with a smile, who gave him the courage to call him a devil. Cheng Feng laughed. As Mirajan gradually emerged, she was dubbed the demon, just like in the plot. Although her name has not spread widely since she became an S-class mage, she is already known to a small number of people. Now a guy named Majin suddenly appeared, which made Mirajan a little unhappy. What qualifications does the other party have to call him a devil? Mirajan has made up her mind to deal with the demon herself in the future. Cheng Feng also noticed this and said to Risley and Kagura, let's do this. Mira and I will deal with those two guys, and you will leave the rest to you. Is that okay? We have no problem, but those two guys. Kagura frowned and couldn't help but speak. But the next moment, he was interrupted by Cheng Feng. He looked at Kagura and chuckled. Although I don't like this name very much, I think you have forgotten it. I am often called, Tyrant. Yes, as Cheng Feng became an S-class mage, he also had his own name, but he just didn't like the name very much. As for why he is called a, Tyrant. Then we have to say that in order to keep up with the number of commissions, Cheng Feng basically went all out in those crusade missions. The terrifying destructive power and the momentum of tearing all resistance to pieces earned Cheng Feng the title of, Tyrant. 
At the same time, it was also widely spread by some dark guilds, cults and the like who slipped through the net. At this point, Cheng Feng's title of tyrant was gradually confirmed. The survival soil of dark guilds in this world is relatively rare, but there are still many magicians who go to extremes and pursue the supreme magic to join them. On this point, the second generation member of Fairy Tail Guild has the most say. Therefore, these dark guilds are like weeds. After being removed, they will continue to grow, which is very annoying. When the mermaid heel ship, driven by Risley, could see a small island emerging in the distance, Risley said to Cheng Feng and Mirajan, We're here, on that small island, Cheng Feng, let's discuss a plan, the other party has a large number of people, we. The plan is simple. Cheng Feng looked at Risley and Kagura and said, We will break through head on. I will take the lead. Quote dot dot dot. Is it so simple and crude? Kagura was depressed, and she always felt that Cheng Feng's brain circuit was a bit strange. If not, Mirajan said contemptuously, if your strength allows you to ignore the strongest guy on the other side, then you probably have the same idea. There is no need for any conspiracy, just rely on your strength to push through. Risley. Kagura. Although I can understand it, I can't do it. But they also saw that this commission should be easily solved. At Cheng Feng's signal, Risley speeded up and approached the island directly. This blatant move was also discovered by the Dark Guild of Nether Spring Water. Just when Cheng Feng and his companions were less than two nautical miles away from the island, Cheng Feng suddenly noticed strange fluctuations in the magic power around him. At the same time, the originally calm and calm sea seemed to be ignited, rolling violently and boiling. In the blink of an eye, a huge water column rose into the sky from the sea, like a powerful cannonball that hit the ship where Cheng Feng and the others were. Be careful, this is heavy water magic. The water flow is so heavy that it can break the ship with one blow. Risley quickly spoke up to remind. Cheng Feng smiled, and then, there was a flash of light on his body, and his half-length hair turned into long translucent aqua hair. Except it, aqua. This was randomly drawn when he was drawing Megumi's cards. Although it was a gold card, Chen Feng felt that it was really free. The hit rate was too high. On the contrary, it was more difficult for Megaman's purple card, smoke. As a goddess, Aqua is responsible for, wisdom, in the anime. But it cannot be denied that as the goddess of water, this girl has really strong control over water. So Cheng Feng kept it as a backup card. And now, it comes in handy. Water summons. Cheng Feng waved his arm lightly, and the huge water column that was originally surging and rushing towards them with great force suddenly stagnated in mid-air as if a restraining spell had been cast on it. Immediately afterwards, Cheng Feng waved his hand casually, and these water columns slowly merged into the sea below like docile sheep. The originally rough and boiling sea surface became calm at this moment, as if the stormy sea just now was just an illusion. Blaze, who was standing on the island, had a look of horror on his face, and big beads of sweat kept rolling down his forehead. He desperately tried to mobilize the magic power in his body, but he felt as if he was completely isolated from the world around him. No matter how hard he tried, he could not get a response. Those water molecules who usually obeyed his words seemed to have completely forgotten him at this moment, ignoring his summons and control. This feeling of powerlessness made Blaze feel unprecedented fear and despair. He stared at everything happening in front of him with wide eyes, and his heart was filled with disbelief. This is the difference in rank. It's not something that can be determined by magic at all. Be careful, the other party is coming. Along with the deafening roar of the observer, many people in the quiet spring water suddenly felt a biting cold wind blowing towards their faces. This cold wind was like a sharp arrow, making people shiver. Before they could react, the rough sea surface in front of them solidified into ice in the blink of an eye, forming a vast ice field. The whole scene seems like time has stopped flowing, giving people a weird and shocking feeling. At this moment, a dazzling golden light suddenly shot out from above the ship, piercing the sky like lightning, and finally stopped steadily in midair in front of everyone. The light gradually dissipated, and a figure gradually emerged. People looked closely and saw a man standing in midair. In his hand, he held a sword that shone with a cold light, and there seemed to be a trace of cold air surrounding the blade. The man's whole body was shrouded in a layer of dazzling golden flames, as if the god of war had descended into the world. 
Wearing a gorgeous royal robe, he looked down at the crowd below. It's over. It's the tyrant of goblins. How could it be him? It's not a mermaid, it's a goblin. The goblin is coming. Everyone in Yuquan felt despair. A person's name, the shadow of a tree. Cheng Feng's reputation made everyone in Yuquan unable to resist the moment he appeared. Tyrant. Let me meet you. But just when everyone in Yuquan was thinking about running away, a voice sounded, and then a man rose into the sky. His whole body was received, his limbs were covered with scales, he had a pair of icy blue wings, and a tail like a dragon's tail. His muscles swelled, he suddenly opened his hands, and a flash of light shot towards Cheng Feng quickly. Your opponent is me. Mirajan of Satan's soul fluttered her bat wings and instantly stopped in front of Cheng Feng. She combined her hands and blasted out a super sadistic flash, directly shattering the opponent's flash. Dark Spark. Mirajan uses her hands to create bursts of dark flashes, shooting towards the opponent like a machine gun. On the opposite side, Ai Lian's pupils shrank sharply, his body retreated violently, and at the same time he clenched a water flow spear in his hand. The guns and flowers danced wildly, and the airtight guns and flowers blocked the dark sparks, but his body was also continuously retreated by the impact, and distanced himself from the main battlefield. Mirajan chased after him and the two fought. And Cheng Feng stood in midair and said, Mermaid heal, leave the soldiers to you, I will deal with the water. It's Yuquan. Blaze roared, heavy water magic was banned, but he also had other means. Seeing Cheng Feng rushing towards him after speaking, Blaze turned the ring in his hand, and numerous flames shot towards Cheng Feng like meteors. Facing such an attack, Cheng Feng swung his sword suddenly, and the cold air burst out. The flames were extinguished by the cold air before they even got close to Cheng Feng. Sitting in the frosty sky, higher in Maru. After the Hyoran pill was released, Cheng Feng looked at the thunderbolt blasted by his opponent again. The corners of Cheng Feng's mouth slightly raised and he waved the long knife in his hand. In an instant, countless sharp and sharp ice picks poured down like a violent storm. These densely packed ice cones, carrying a biting chill, fell downwards at an alarming speed. They are like a feast of ice and snow, but to the enemy they are a dance of death. Risley and Kagura, who were originally preparing to eliminate those Yuquan minions, couldn't help but stop when they saw this scene. They stared at the overwhelming icicle rain in front of them with wide eyes and astonishment. When the ice pick finally stopped, the two people slowly came back to their senses and looked forward. I saw that the originally bustling battlefield had become dead silent at this moment, and the ground was covered with thick ice, like a frozen world. Most of the Yuquan minions who were arrogant and domineering before were now frozen into ice cubes, with only a few miscellaneous fish still lingering. Risley and Kagura looked at each other, feeling indescribable shock in their hearts. Until now, they didn't really understand why Cheng Feng was called, Tyrant. His terrifying strength and ruthless methods are truly terrifying. It's so brutal. Risley couldn't help but sigh, and then quickened his pace. She felt that if she didn't hurry up, the aftermath of Cheng Feng's attack would probably wipe out all these trash fish. If a crusade ended completely without them taking any action, then their mermaid heel would be shameless. Risley and Kagura rushed towards the miscellaneous fish, and those miscellaneous fish were frightened by Cheng Feng. They had no guts to fight with the two women. They basically collapsed at the first touch and ran away crazily, clearing the place for Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng slowly walked towards Blaze. The panting Blaze looked at the calm Cheng Feng, despair rising in his heart. I'll give you two ways. Cheng Feng looked at the other party and said calmly, One, admit defeat, I will tie you up and send you to prison. The second, if you resist again, I will give you a decent life and give you a ride. Make your choice. Faced with Cheng Feng's two options, Blaze felt helpless. Did he have any choice? The other party didn't give him a way to survive at all. If the heavy water magic hadn't been restrained, he wouldn't be so embarrassed. Boom. Just when Blaze was thinking about how to escape, a strong explosion suddenly broke out in the sky. The deafening sound waves reached Cheng Feng, making him look up at the sky. Over there, Mirajan flew backwards, her body covered with scars. Good opportunity. Just when Cheng Feng's eyes were dull, Blaze's eyes flashed with a trace of viciousness, and he quickly turned the blood-colored ring on his finger. 
At the same time, his originally strong body suddenly shrank like a deflated ball. In an instant, a blood-red breath gushed out of Blaze's body and gathered in mid-air into an extremely sharp, cold-shining blood sword. This blood sword seemed to have spirituality, crossing the space at an astonishing speed, and piercing Cheng Feng's heart like lightning. Cheng Feng was stunned by this sudden change. He widened his eyes and watched the deadly blood sword rushing towards him. At this moment, time seemed to freeze, and everything around became extremely quiet, with only the sharp whistling sound of the blood sword cutting through the air echoing in his ears. This was Blaze's ultimate move, and he didn't know how many opponents stronger than him died under his move. So he was very confident. You are not the first one to die under this move, nor will you be the last. Ah. Just as Blaze imagined how tragically this fairy tyrant would die, he suddenly felt that the world in front of him seemed to be split in half. Until the last moment of his life, he still had a confident smile on his lips, but there was a trace of confusion in his eyes. Cheng Feng looked down at the blood sword that was deeply inserted into his muscles, and then slowly moved his left finger away from his neck. Then, the muscles of his whole body suddenly tightened, and a powerful force burst out instantly. I saw that the blood sword flew backwards at a rapid speed as if it was shot out by a slingshot. Injure the acupuncture points. Tisk, I was careless. It seems that I am still too young. Cheng Feng smacked his lips, looked at the wound that had just stopped bleeding a little, and then looked at Blaze, who had half of his head cut off by his backhand knife, and turned to leave. On the other side, Mirajan was suppressed from all sides. I Leon had completely turned into a monster at this moment, and his strength had skyrocketed. This was also the reason why he was able to suppress Mirajan's satanic soul. Cheng Feng just watched and did not act rashly, because he saw that the opponent I Leon had a burst skill and would wither after this wave, and although Mirajan was a little injured, she was able to keep up with the opponent's rhythm and would not be fatally injured for a while. If this goes on, it will only be a matter of time for Mirajan to win. Of course, another reason why Cheng Feng did not intervene was that he saw that what I Leon received was also a demon. It just met Mirajan's requirements. If Mirajan defeated the opponent herself, she could completely snatch what the opponent received. If I intervene, how can this demon recognize Mirajan? As Cheng Feng guessed, the opponent burst out for a while and then completely withered, and the magic power was consumed to the bottom. Mirajan seized the opportunity and hit I Leon with a series of moves. I Leon was directly smashed into the ice. Do you want my help? Cheng Feng looked at Mirajan who was slowly landing and smiled. No, I can do it myself. It was rare to meet a demon that suited her. Mirajan walked in front of I Leon, picked up I Leon, who was unknown whether he was alive or dead, and covered I Leon's face with her claws. The next moment, the breath of darkness filled the air, and a shadow was pulled out by Mirajan. No, it can't be said to be pulled. It should be said that Mirajan just started it, and the shadow directly abandoned I Leon and rushed directly to Mirajan. All go. Cheng Feng reacted immediately, and just as he was about to take action, Mirajan raised her trembling hand and stopped Cheng Feng. The I Leon she was holding slowly turned into a mummy and fell onto the ice. Ah. Mirajan screamed, attracting Risley and Kagura who had just dealt with the small fry. What's wrong with Mira? Seeing Mirajan's somewhat painful look, Risley and Kagura asked with concern. Careless. Cheng Feng took the pendant off his neck and put it on Mirajan while she was still conscious. That I Leon did not receive the devil, but the devil received him. Cheng Feng took a few steps back and said, Mirajan wanted to receive this demon. She originally thought that after defeating it, she should be able to receive it easily. But she didn't expect that this reception would be the other way around. The demon still had the power to resist and hit M.I. caught off guard. Is it serious? Kagura didn't know how to receive magic, so she spoke with some concern. It's not a big problem. Cheng Feng said, if Mira can't bear it, I will take action to suppress this demon. However, if I take action, it will affect Myra's use in the future, so it is best for Mira to subdue it on her own. As she spoke, Mirajan's whole body magic burst out, light flashed, and the next moment, Satan's soul disappeared, and Mirajan's whole body changed into another form. The limbs were covered with scales and had sharp claws. He was dressed in a striped swimsuit and had a pair of sharp horned shoulder pads on his shoulders. 
there were ice blue wings on its back, and a long ice blue tail swung, smashing the solid ice and sending ice shards flying in random directions. A pair of sharp horns rose from both sides of the head, a small amount of scales appeared on Mirajan's face, a pair of pointed ears trembled, and murderous intent slowly gathered in her eyes. Wait a minute, this image. I think I've seen it before. Cheng Feng was stunned for a moment, and then he came to his senses. Isn't this the form of Mirajan's demon god Halfas? Although this form is original to TV, the intensity is really high. But, Cheng Feng looked at Ai Leon with a strange look on his face. Even in the form of demon god Halfas, this Leon actually needed to rely on bursts to suppress Mirajan for a period of time. How weak is this fool? No wonder Mirajan wanted to take her over. Demon god Halfas immediately abandoned Leon without any hesitation, and even sucked Leon into a mummy, preparing to snatch Mirajan's body. However, the other party's calculation was wrong. Mirajan is not comparable to Leon at all. As soon as the demon god Halfas entered Mirajan's body, he was immediately completely banned by Mirajan. Then Cheng Feng thoughtfully gave Mirajan the pendant he used. With the blessing of extra magic power, Mirajan can deal with the demon Halfas more easily. Therefore, the demon Halfas suffered a tragedy. Cheng Feng watched Mirajan's eyes gradually become clearer, and he suddenly understood that Mirajan had accepted it. Moreover, Halfas even lost his wife and troops, and absorbed all of Leon's power. Now that it has been taken in, all of it has become Mirajan's power. Mirajan felt the surge of magic power in her body and laughed. Paired with this devil's costume, it has a strange beauty. With a flash of light, Mirajan returned to her original appearance of hot clothes and pants. Cheng Feng looked at the scars on her body and sighed. Receive, heal the deck. Then he put his hand on Mirajan's shoulder, and the healing light emerged, and Mirajan's minor injuries healed instantly. Thanks. The pain in her body disappeared, Mirajan smiled and said to Cheng Feng. Have you returned the things to me? Cheng Feng pointed to his pendant. Mirajan stuffed it directly into her chest and said with a slightly red face, here you go. As he said that, he pushed up his little lotus to reveal his sharp chest. Cheng Feng, you really think I don't dare to take action, right? Cheng Feng sighed, he really didn't dare to do it now. Mirajan looked at the defeated Cheng Feng, a trace of frustration flashed in her eyes, but on the surface she said arrogantly, since you are hanging on my neck, then it is mine. Is Cheng Feng afraid to do it? Obviously not, he knows very well in his heart that Mirajan has a crush on him, and even if he really takes advantage of her, Mirajan may complain or punch Cheng Feng a few times, but in her heart, Mirajan is definitely happy. So if it were the original Cheng Feng, he would probably be willing to do it. But now, Cheng Feng can't do it. Of course, it's not the thing that can't do it. It's this body that can't do it. The obsession of this body, which was originally called Caesar, has not dissipated. If he really wants to do something intimate, Cheng Feng always feels weird. It's the kind of feeling that he is cheating on himself. So this is also the reason why Cheng Feng has the ability to capture, but he has not taken action. Maybe, only when the obsession of this body is completely dissipated, can I really be myself again. Cheng Feng sighed in his heart, and then he started the most exciting thing of this commission. Looting the spoils. The commission was from Mermaid Heel. Logically, Mermaid Heel took the lion's share, and Cheng Feng and his friends helped out, so they only needed to collect certain things. But obviously, Risley and Kagura were not arrogant people, and they were very reasonable. They let Cheng Feng and his friends pick first, and they would take the rest. After all, the main force of this commission was Cheng Feng and his friends, and the two of them were just there to help. Cheng Feng looked up and refused, saying to the two of them, One is one, two is two, we should do it as we should. No, we will not live with our conscience. Risley and Kagura refused directly. It's so troublesome. Mirajan suddenly said, Don't bother so much, just collect the things and give each family half. Quote dot dot dot. That's fine. In the end, Mirajan's method was adopted, half for each family. Then the four of them separated and began to collect the things in the guild of the nether spring water. Cheng Feng relied on his intuition to find a large amount of money, which was not much, just over 2 million J. In the past, it was a huge sum for Cheng Feng. 
But now, Cheng Feng basically spends hundreds of millions of dollars, so he is not that excited about this little money. After all, it is only 20 bottles of potion, which can be earned in one day. Wait, what is this? Suddenly, Cheng Feng found a small box, opened it and took a look, and was slightly stunned. Because inside, there was a golden key on the velvet. Isn't this the key of the zodiac? This pattern. Sagittarius. Cheng Feng picked up the key and looked at it, confirming the origin of the key. According to the original plot, this key should be on the island full of demons, that is, the island where Leon used the moon drop to melt the ice on Leon's body. After Lucy and the others finished their work, they gave it to Lucy. Unexpectedly, now, this key is actually here in the water of the dark spring. But think about it, this dark guild will definitely be attacked, and the people who come at that time will not have the suppression power of Cheng Feng, and those small fish may run away with the money. At that time, this key may be lost and then picked up by the village chief. If I want to sell this thing, it will probably be a sky-high price. Cheng Feng put the key away and put it in the system backpack. Give it to Lucy when the time comes. After all, celestial spirit magic is still very important in the later stage. It will be good if Lucy can master it all. Cheng Feng muttered to himself, and he had already prepared the key for its owner. After finding the key, there was nothing good to find next. Soon, the four of them met up and put the things they found together. A total of more than 3.6 million J, 20 magic props, and other magic books and other items added together, a total of 86 items. Risley looked at Cheng Feng and said, how to divide it. Some of these things are expensive and some are cheap. If it is simply 50 to 50, it will definitely be uneven. This is also a general crusade mission that needs to be handled with the guild team, so that even if the distribution is not good, it can still be accepted. Everyone chooses what he likes first, and the rest is 50 to 50. Cheng Feng spoke, and the three women nodded and began to choose what they liked. Cheng Feng was not polite. He searched among the things and finally selected two magic crystals. It doesn't have much effect for Cheng Feng, but the price is pretty good. Two magic crystals can be sold for 300,000 J. The remaining items were divided, and Cheng Feng conservatively estimated that the income from this trip would be over 2 million J. Others are similar, so I say that this kind of commission is indeed the fastest to earn money. Of course, being poorer than the guild does not count. For example, there are only so many people in Oracion Cis, and they have no fixed residence. They are simply the poorest of the poor. Why do we need to send people from various guilds to deal with it in the plot? One reason is that what these guys want to touch is too dangerous, plus they are very powerful. Another most important reason is that they are too poor. They were so poor that no one was willing to accept their commission, so they were allowed to grow to that extent. If the Magic Council was willing to pay more, Brain could take the five children who were brought out and send any S-class magician to arrest them all. How could we wait until that time? Cheng Feng knew this and didn't bother to care about it. After all, nothing could happen to him. When it got to that point and the new magic council paid for it, it wouldn't be too late for him to take action. Risley took Kagura and left by boat, while Cheng Feng and Mirajan flew. Cheng Feng, take me for a ride. Mirajan, who is in the Satan soul receiving state, looked at Cheng Feng beside her and said. Cheng Feng sighed and stretched out his hand from the golden aura. Mirajan smiled and held Cheng Feng's hand, getting into the arrogance of Cheng Feng's body. Mira. Um. In a short period of time, I don't have much thought about other things. Cheng Feng looked ahead and said, Right now, I just want to find those people who destroyed Rosemary Village and take revenge. I know. Mirajan spoke calmly, and squeezed Cheng Feng's hand with a slightly hard hand. But, I don't want to give you up to anyone. Mirajan didn't know when she fell in love with Cheng Feng. Maybe he left the village with him. Maybe he helped them gradually get on the right track. Maybe it was the discomfort I felt when I saw him interacting with other girls. Although Mirajan is not very good at expressing her inner thoughts, most of the time, she will just act like a little girl, holding up a sky for her younger brothers and sisters, and silently swallowing the pain. However, one thing is for sure, Mirajan. That's her, she will never give up Cheng Feng to anyone. This is her heart. Facing Mirajan's almost confession, Cheng Feng smiled, held Mirajan's hand tightly and said, wait for me. 
Good. Mirajan nodded. This is enough. Something happened between Cheng Feng and Mirajan. Such thoughts have appeared in everyone's mind recently. Because they noticed that the pendant given by Makarov when Cheng Feng was promoted to S-class mage appeared on Mirajan's neck after Cheng Feng and Mirajan went out to work. But if the two are really ready to be together, the atmosphere between the two is not the same as that of Biska and Alzac. The two of them were still doing their own things, exactly as usual. Kana, what do you think? On a table, several people's heads were gathered together, and Urza looked at Kana next to her. I feel like there's something interesting between the two of them. Kana expressed his opinion. It's good that my sister and brother Cheng Feng are together, but I don't know if they will hold a wedding. Lisana said with a smile. Wedding, marriage. I am a naive bride, please. Urza's face turned red, she must have fantasized about her marriage. But if Cheng Feng gets married, then if I challenge, don't I have to defeat Cheng Feng and Mira? Oh, I'm on fire. Natsu didn't understand what it meant yet, he was thinking wrongly. Love, I'll help too. This is Happy the Troublemaker. Natsu, fighting is bad. Elfman has not changed yet. He is still a gentle little boy. Both of them are fighting mad. If they really have a child, they will probably have a headache. After all, their parents are so strong, so they should be very obedient. Gray thought further and changed the topic again. What are you doing? Just when they were getting further and further away from each other and almost failed to get Cheng Feng and Mirajan married on the spot, Wu Lu came over and poured ice water on the hot atmosphere. Nothing, nothing. Just a quick chat. Work work. Together. Together. The group of people dispersed, but when Gray tried to run away, Wu Lu pinched his neck. Wu Lu wanted to lift the collar, but Gray took it off again, so she couldn't just pull off his underwear. Unable to escape. Gray had no choice but to speak out in detail, which made Ulu thoughtful. She glanced at Cheng Feng, who was sitting aside and mixing potions, shook her head and said, he still has something on his mind, so he won't change anything. He will only change if he completely heals his worries. Gray listened to Wulu's words and whispered to Wulu about Cheng Feng's past. After hearing this, Wulu immediately understood why Cheng Feng was like this. The darkness of the past was a thorn in his heart. If this thorn cannot be removed, he will always be imprisoned in the prison of the past. Poor child. Wulu sighed and said, no one can help him seal the darkness in his heart. But now, he has used his own efforts to gain the power to crush the darkness, but he cannot find the darkness in his heart. Wulu looked at Makarov who was drinking on the other side and found that he was also looking at Cheng Feng. He smiled immediately and it seemed that she didn't need to worry about anything. The head of the family has been paying attention to the growth of each child. Is this fairy tale? At this moment, a young man who was wrapped up tightly with only his eyes exposed walked in. He was carrying a huge backpack, with several staffs stuck on top of the backpack. Is there a problem? Makarov looked at the boy and asked. I want to join fairy tale. The boy spoke and looked at Makarov. Makarov frowned slightly, looked at the boy and said, What's your name? Jay. Mistogan. My name is Mistogan. The young man opened his mouth and wanted to say something, but he quickly changed his mind. Others didn't pay attention, but Cheng Feng, who was making potion, looked up at the other party. Makarov seemed to have thought of something. He stood up and said to Mistogan, come with me. Mistogan nodded, then walked towards Makarov, followed Makarov towards the back of the guild. Upon seeing this, Cheng Feng pondered for a moment and then disappeared. Others were not surprised and didn't pay much attention at all. Are you from Edelis? After the guild, Makarov looked at Mistogan and said straight to the point, I know someone who is from another world just like you. Mistogan was stunned, not expecting that he would be exposed so quickly. But after listening to Makarov's words, Mistogan nodded and said, yes. Your purpose. Makarov looked into the other person's eyes and said, earn some living expenses. Mistogan said, but the main task is to stop the fool. Do you know the fool? Makarov shook his head. After all, Porashika came too early, and he didn't know much about Edelis. Mistogan pondered for a moment, and then told Makarov about the fool. When Makarov heard that fool was extracting the magic power from their world, he frowned. I wanted to stop them, so I came here. Mistogan looked at Makarov and said, at present, I have prevented the from launching twice, but I am no longer troubled. 
I need a place where I can work and make money. At the same time, this place does not have so many restrictions. So I came to fairy tale. According to what you said, that desolate land should be the product of the S activation. Cheng Feng suddenly spoke, startling Mistogan and making Makarov sigh. Cheng Feng, eavesdropping on other people's conversations is not a good habit. Somewhat curious, Cheng Feng appeared in front of them. Mistogan was nervous for a while, but Makarov reached out to block it. So, Makarov looked at Cheng Feng. Just out of curiosity, I also approve of him joining Fairy Tail. Cheng Feng shrugged and said, As you know, Grandpa Guild Master, I can read people's faces, so I found that many people in our guild will have something to do with him in the future, so I want to know more about that so-called AF asterisk CK. Makarov listened to Cheng Feng's words, pondered for a moment, and then said to Mistogan, I agree with you joining Fairy Tail, but you'd better keep your attire like this, understand? Learn. Mistogan nodded, this is the best result. Cheng Feng looked at Mistogan, then took out a magic kanai from the system backpack and handed it to Mistogan and said, here it is, keep it. If necessary, use magic power to stimulate it. I can sense it. Consider it surveillance. Mistogan took the technique kanai from Cheng Feng and asked. No. Cheng Feng shook his head and said, I want to see your face. Mistogan pondered for a moment, then pulled down his mask, revealing his face. Looking at the face of the young man in front of him, Cheng Feng nodded and said, Okay, I remember it. After saying that, Cheng Feng disappeared from the spot. This made Mistogan a little confused. What happened? Just to see my face. Mistogan, who was confused, raised his hand to pull up his mask, followed Makarov back to the guild, stamped his coat of arms, and officially became a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. Everyone has been working hard recently. Lulu was walking on the street, holding a paper bag filled with ingredients in his hand. As he walked, he looked at Gray beside him and asked, did something happen? Because the S-level assessment is about to begin. Gray put his head in his hands and said leisurely, but I probably won't be able to do it this year. So that's it, Gray, why don't you try harder? Uru smiled softly. It's not that you don't work hard, it's that this class is too difficult. Laxus, Urza, and Mirajan are all tough guys to deal with. Even that guy with the hanging eye probably won't be able to get selected. Gray sighed, very self-aware. Okay, do you want to come to my house for dinner tonight? Uru touched Gray's head and said with a smile. No, I have something to do, so I'm going back first. Gray waved to Uru and then left. Uru looked at Gray's back, the smile on his face filled with relief. This kind of life is quite good. Ulu said with a self-deprecating smile. When he walked through an alley, the fleeting white figure stunned Ulu who had just passed by. There was an expression of disbelief on her face, and she turned around and came to the entrance of the alley. But the figure in the original memory did not appear. Sure enough, did I see it wrong? Uru murmured to himself, holding the paper bag in his arms tightly with both hands. It has been so many years, and I have died once. Ultir, I miss you so much. On the roof, a girl in white looked down at Ulu below, her face full of indifference. Seeing Ulu leaving in despair, the girl in white also left. It's been so long and she hasn't let go. She wanted to ask clearly what happened back then. After opening the door, Ulu walked home in a daze. The paper bag was placed casually on the coffee table. Ulu lay on the sofa, with memories of the past constantly emerging in his mind. Call out. There was a sound of breaking through the air, and before Ulu could react, a crystal ball appeared out of thin air and hit the distracted Ulu as fast as a meteor. The sofa overturned, and Ulu was knocked out. He rolled several times before getting up, clutching his abdomen. Looking around, Ulu frowned and shouted, Who? No one responded, but crystal balls kept emerging, forming a dense network and shooting towards Ulu quickly. Ulu took a stance, waved his hand suddenly, and was surrounded by a circle of ice spikes to resist these crystal balls. But the next moment, the ice spikes surrounding Ulu disappeared instantly. This sudden scene made Ulu a little stunned. And those crystal balls fell directly and kept hitting Ulu's body. Ulu was knocked back, turned onto his side, stood firm, clasped his hands together, and pushed out suddenly, and countless ice crystals immediately froze the crystal ball. 
It only froze for a second, and the ice crystals immediately dissipated. This strange scene also completely allowed Ulu to see clearly how his ice disappeared. Time. I didn't expect it to be the lost magic, the arc of time, who is it? Come out. Wulu shouted violently, the confusion in his eyes disappeared, and the magic power in his body also exploded at this moment. Pa 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 pa. A round of applause sounded, and a girl in white came in from outside the door. Her long black hair fell on her back like a waterfall. She looked at Ulu with a hint of hatred in her eyes, and said sarcastically, she is worthy of being a woman who has devoted herself to the magic path. Her reaction ability is fast. With the appearance of the girl, Ulu's originally gathered momentum scattered like mercury falling to the ground. She covered her mouth with her hand, fearing that if she spoke louder, it would turn all this into a dream. Ultir. Ulu's tears flowed like a spring. At this moment, she was completely overwhelmed by the surprise and didn't take Ultir's words to heart at all. She stretched out her arm tremblingly, wanting to touch Ultir's face, wanting to see if this was a dream. But looking at Ultir's cold eyes, Ulu came back to her senses a little. She wanted to get close to Ultir, but found that she couldn't do it at all. She put down her arm and opened her mouth to say something, but there were too many things she wanted to say, and she didn't know what to say for a while. Thousands of words finally converged into one sentence, it's really great that you are still alive. After saying that, his legs softened, and Ulu knelt on the ground, looking at the girl in front of him, smiling with tears in his eyes. Ultir was originally full of revenge, but when she saw Ulu's tears and smile, her heart twitched fiercely. She paid so much, and what she prayed for was not to go back to the past, to the time when Ulu was still alive and she was still by Ulu's side. Now, Ulu was in front of her. Why? Why didn't she dare to step forward and question? Why did she abandon herself? Why was she so cruel, even if she could come to see herself, why didn't she come to see herself? When Ultir thought of this, she was full of grievances. The crystal ball smashed towards Ulu even more crazily. Ulu did not resist, just endured the impact of the crystal ball, and looked at Ultir gently. Why? 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 Ultir screamed, and the less Ulu resisted, the angrier she became. Blood flowed down. Ultir looked at the miserable Ulu, biting her lips tightly, and a trace of blood also flowed down. Resist. Ultir roared, rushed to Ulu, and slapped Ulu in the face. With a crisp sound, Ultir was stunned, staring at her painful palm in a daze. The next moment, a pair of soft arms hugged her, and gentle words rang in her ears. Good boy, Ultir, you must have suffered a lot over the years. I'm sorry that mom couldn't find you. It's all my fault, it's all my fault, it's all my fault. Ulu's tears flowed wantonly. Ultir listened to Ulu's words, and the softest part of her heart was stabbed hard. The next moment, Ultir, who couldn't hold it back any longer, hugged Ulu and cried loudly, bending all the pain and sadness she had suffered over the years with tears. The mother and daughter hugged each other and cried bitterly, not noticing that outside the door, a man in a divine robe was leaning against the door frame, silently watching the scene of mother and daughter recognizing each other. Without disturbing the two people inside, Cheng Feng just looked at Ultir being held by Ulu. The fish has been hooked. He could already feel the obsession in his body roaring and struggling. Cheng Feng's eyes were cold, which was affected by the obsession. As time went by, the obsession became deeper. Cheng Feng couldn't wait any longer, he couldn't wait to complete the last obsession of this body and put an end to Zis's life. Only in this way, he will become the real Cheng Feng. The crying gradually stopped. Wu Lu first spotted Cheng Feng at the door. Wiping his tears, Wu Lu said to Cheng Feng, Sorry, I made you laugh. When Ultir heard Wu Lu's words, he immediately stood up and looked at Cheng Feng suddenly. The tyrant of the fairies. Ultir looked at Cheng Feng warily, his eyes full of fear. Cheng Feng ignored Ultir and walked into the house. The light on his body flashed as if nothing happened. However, Cheng Feng slowly revealed a reassuring aura. The injury is quite serious. You should cherish your body. Cheng Feng walked to Wulu's side, raised his hand, and the healing light enveloped Wulu. The injury caused by Ultir recovered quickly, and Wulu, who was healed quickly, stood up and said thank you to Cheng Feng. Put your affairs aside, Wulu, and let's talk about you. Cheng Feng looked at Ultir with a serious expression. 
Cheng Feng, she is my daughter. Wu Lu stopped in front of Ultir and said to Cheng Feng, please don't embarrass her. Ultir's heart rang with alarm bells, and at the same time he secretly thought that he was too careless, and when he saw Uru, he completely lost his original vigilance. Okay, I'll give you some face. Cheng Feng spread his hands, looked at Ulu and said, but judging from the experience I have accumulated from completing so many commissions. Anyone who can be so wary of my name is either a dark guild or a cult or something, you daughter, it's very possible that you're going the wrong way. Quote dot dot dot. I will teach her. I thought she had passed away, which is why she took the wrong path, so I will be responsible for guiding her to the right path. Wulu was silent for a moment and looked at Cheng Feng, his eyes particularly firm. Okay, but I want to be a witness. Cheng Feng spoke, looked at Ultir and said, if you have anything to say, please talk to her and don't touch her. She is your mother after all. Wulu finally breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that Cheng Feng had no intention of intervening. Ultir, on the other hand, looked at Cheng Feng, knowing that if he didn't explain something, the man in front of him, who was called a tyrant, would not be able to let him go. Thinking of this gave her a headache. If I really didn't do those things, I guess there is nothing I dare not say. But his hands were already dirty. She was scared and saw disappointment in Ulu's eyes. Or lie. Just when such a thought came to Ultir's mind, Cheng Feng suddenly said, By the way, don't think about lying. I have a receiving spirit that can distinguish lies. Cheng Feng's body flashed with light, and his original appearance turned into a white-haired old man with an airplane head. Ultir's heart trembled, she had no way to tell whether the other party was lying. But she couldn't guarantee that the other party really couldn't tell the difference. After struggling for a moment, Ultir looked into Uru's clear eyes, sighed, and said, as you may have guessed, I am now a member of Grimoire Heart. The truth. Cheng Feng spoke calmly, Ultir's heart skipped a beat, and Ulu's heart tightened. I just heard that you were resurrected, Uru, so I came over to take a look. Lie. Cheng Feng spoke calmly, and the aura on his body suddenly swelled. I said. I said. Seeing that Cheng Feng was about to take action in an instant, Ultir no longer dared to lie, and immediately briefly told the purpose of his coming here and his experiences over the years. After listening to Ultir's narration, Uru became furious. She gave Ultir to them because she wanted them to cure the excessive magic power in Ultir's body, not to let them use Ultir as a test subject. But Ultir alone destroyed the Institute. Although Ultir said it lightly, Uru knew very well how much Ultir had suffered and how many hardships he had endured to reach this point. Cheng Feng looked at Ultir and said, It's mostly true, but there are some hidden things. Ultir was shocked and quickly said, I really didn't lie. I didn't say you lied. Cheng Feng looked at Ultir and said, What are you hiding? Let me ask you, the arrest incident of the Dark Magic Order four years ago should have the shadow of that research institute. You were among them. Don't tell me that you are not what do you know. As soon as Cheng Feng finished speaking, Wu Lu's eyes widened suddenly. She thought of what Grey had told her about Cheng Feng's past. After combining Cheng Feng's current words, Wu Lu knew very well that Cheng Feng was definitely not innocent and had definitely found something. Ultir had been in the research institute, so maybe he really knew something. Arrests. Ultir looked confused, he really hadn't understood this before. Just a heads up. Cheng Feng said coldly, Urza was also arrested and later escaped. Ultir suddenly understood, because she had brainwashed Jellal, so of course she knew about Urza. So instantly, she reacted. Then, she thought of the R system. Etc. Ultir suddenly reacted, Uradu was resurrected, and the R system was useless to her. When he thought of this, Ultir immediately said, I know this. These are the undead of those dark magic cults who want to use R system to resurrect Zirf. So they have to arrest people to build R system. Where are they? Cheng Feng's eyes flashed, and murderous aura surged out. Face to face, Ultir was startled by the sudden murderous intent, and his heart skipped a few beats. Etc. Wulu came back to his senses and quickly said to Cheng Feng, Cheng Feng, don't mess around. The other party has a large number of people and you are alone. Cheng. Higher Inmaru was unsheathed, and the cold blade was placed on Uru's neck. Uru, don't stop me. Cheng Feng's eyes were cold. Even Wulu felt a little strange about Cheng Feng like this. 
After saying that, Cheng Feng picked up Ultir and said to Ulu who didn't react, I'll take your daughter away. Don't worry, I will protect her. However, please don't stop me. This is mine. The closest I've been to my goal in these years, I've been waiting for it for four years. After saying that, Cheng Feng burst out with golden flames. Carrying Ultir, Cheng Feng rose into the sky and flew quickly towards the sea. It's over. Something big is going to happen. Wulu rushed out of the gate and watched the golden meteor belonging to Cheng Feng fly away quickly. He gritted his teeth and rushed towards the guild. At this moment, the guild was not completely closed. Wu Lu kicked the door open, stood at the door and shouted towards the inside, President. It's bad. Something happened to Cheng Feng. Uru's voice made the entire guild stop making noise, and everyone looked at Uru. Makarov even put down his wine glass, frowned at Uru and asked, what happened? Wu Lu knew that she could not wait too long and did not hide anything. She immediately told her daughter to come to her, but her daughter had joined the Dark Guild and even participated in the arrest incident. Now she was taken away by Cheng Feng. It seemed that I have to go directly to those people to trouble me. What? After hearing what Uru said, the first person who couldn't sit still was not anyone else, but Urza. She escaped from the Tower of Heaven, and she knew best what it was like there. Urza immediately said to Makarov, President, we'd better set out immediately to stop Cheng Feng. Makarov looked at Urza and frowned, give me a reason. In Makarov's view, since it is the Dark Order, even if Cheng Feng goes crazy and destroys that place, it will not be a big deal. It is estimated that if it is reported to the Magic Council, there will be no explanation from above, and even Cheng Feng will be given give some bonuses. In the Tower of Heaven, there are not only people from the Dark Order, but also many innocent survivors. My, my family is also among them. I am afraid that Cheng Feng will really be overwhelmed by anger and destroy the entire tower in one breath. Of heaven is completely destroyed, including the innocent people inside. Urza sighed, now she couldn't hide it even if she wanted to. Hiss. At this moment, everyone took a breath. With Cheng Feng's destructive power and being carried away by anger, he might really be able to kill him. After all, he doesn't know if there are any innocent people in the Tower of Heaven. When Makarov heard this, his scalp became numb, and he immediately roared, Everyone, get on the boat, let's go after Cheng Feng. President, I'll go after him first. Mirajan spoke quickly, and immediately accepted the demon halfas without caring about hiding. Although Satan's soul is more durable, in terms of speed, demon god halfas's burst is faster, and he can catch up with Cheng Feng in the shortest time. Okay. Mira, you go chase Cheng Feng first. Stop him as much as possible. Makarov said quickly, even if you can't stop him, tell him that there are innocent people there and let him take it easy and don't eat it all in one go. Mirajan nodded, then flapped her wings and disappeared in an instant. The members of the guild could only see a blue meteor flying towards the sea. Immediately afterwards, Makarov took the lead, and all members of the guild mobilized and boarded the guild ship. Everyone put out all their magic power and drove the ship very fast, just to catch up with Cheng Feng. The golden meteor flashed away, and Cheng Feng carried Ultir, who was about to vomit, to the sky above a sea area. Picking up Ultir, Cheng Feng looked at him and said, is this right here? Yes, there is a barrier here, ah. Uh. Ultir couldn't hold it in any longer, so he opened his mouth and spit it out, losing all of his image of a beautiful girl. Is it a barrier? Cheng Feng looked at the empty sea in front of him, raised his left hand, and the steaming magic power quickly gathered towards Cheng Feng's left hand. Turtle. Hai. Chi. Gong. A dazzling light blue shock wave surged out from Cheng Feng's hand. This shock wave was more than two meters thick, and it rushed straight towards the huge shield in front like a roaring dragon. In an instant, two extremely powerful forces suddenly collided together, erupting with an earth-shaking loud noise. The super-strong magic power erupted violently like a volcano, causing the entire shield to tremble. Although the shield quickly gathered a massive amount of magic power in an attempt to resist, it was all in vain in the face of the indestructible power of Turtle School Qigong. As time passed, the pressure on the shield increased, and fine cracks began to appear on the surface. Finally, after another violent impact, there was only a crisp sound of, bang, and the entire shield completely collapsed. 
Countless fragments flew everywhere, like a colorful fireworks feast. The shield disappeared, finally revealing the small island under the shield, and on the small island, a huge tower with a height of more than 10 meters has been built. Finally found. Cheng Feng's eyes surged with murderous intent, and he rushed towards the tower with Ultir. At this moment, there was also a panic in the Tower of Heaven. These people never dreamed that someone would suddenly smash the shield they were hiding in and rush towards them like a wild bull. Alarm. Alarm. There is an intruder. Where are the magic soldiers? Come on quickly. No, the opponent is too strong. I can't beat him. What are you doing to eat? Even if you die, stop him. All up. Stop him. But it's useless. These members of the Dark Order are no match for Cheng Feng. When these disgusting and hateful clothes in his memory appeared in front of Cheng Feng, the obsession hidden in Cheng Feng's body completely exploded. Get out of here. Cheng Feng roared, inserted his fingers into his shoulders, and his body instantly expanded, turning into a giant more than three meters tall. With a roar, the endless pressure directly paralyzed the rushing fish. The body disappeared, the Hyoran pill was unsheathed, and the initial release was completed in an instant. As Cheng Feng suddenly swung his knife, countless ice picks appeared in an instant, freezing all the fish around him. Boom! A punch hit the ground, the shock spread, and the frozen ice completely shattered and turned into debris. Don't destroy the tower we worked so hard to build. Just when Cheng Feng was about to go deeper, a roar sounded, and then a rope wrapped around Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng's eyes were also dark, and there were several sounds of breaking through the air in his ears. Except it, Kenshin. Losing his sight and enhancing the limits of his other senses, Cheng Feng clenched his Hyoran pill and swung his sword suddenly. The ice dragon roared out and with a loud exclamation, Cheng Feng's sight regained its vision. And around him were little guys who were frozen with only their heads outside. He was Urza's childhood friend. Meow, you can't move. Miliana struggled, but couldn't get out. Seeing Cheng Feng walking towards her, Miliana couldn't help but panicked. Don't come over. Accepted, Kuroko Shirai. Reaching out to touch the ice, Miliana was screaming one second, and fell into the sea the next. The buoyancy of the ice made her float on the sea, and soon after, her little friend Simon and Hugh appeared beside her. A few people Urza cares about are no longer here. Cheng Feng looked at the members of the Dark Order who were ready to move around, and sneered, then, it's time to end. In an instant, Cheng Feng disappeared from the spot. When he reappeared, he was already above the Tower of Heaven. After removing Shirai Kuroko's card, Cheng Feng replaced it with Megaman's card. Except, Megaman. A pointed mage hat appeared on Cheng Feng's head. Megaman's card is very special. It only has the skill of explosion magic. From this point of view, this card is very weak. It can be said that promoting it to a purple card is indeed a bit reluctant. However, after receiving this card, it is very strong. It is precisely because there is only one skill that this skill is promoted to the limit. Explosion magic is the ultimate destructive magic. Its essence is the spread and explosion of pure magic power, and it is the strongest attack magic that can cause damage to all existences. As long as the magic power output is enough, the destructive power of the explosion magic will be stronger. So. Explode. It's daybreak. The bright light illuminated the dark night. Under the guidance of Urza, Makarov, who was looking ahead on the boat, suddenly discovered that the sun appeared in front of him. No. Not the sun. Makarov's pupils shrank rapidly, because he saw clearly that it was a huge fireball formed by a high concentration of magic power. Cheng Feng. No. Mirajan arrived first and her magic power was almost exhausted, calling out to Cheng Feng. But it's too late. Boom. The huge fireball fell from the sky like a burning meteorite, like a dazzling sun falling rapidly. At that thrilling moment, an earth-shaking explosion suddenly broke out. The raging flames and the deafening sound were intertwined, as if they were about to tear the entire world apart. A huge flame mushroom cloud rose into the sky, covering the sky and the sun, occupying everyone's field of vision. Immediately afterwards, the turbulent air wave swept over with overwhelming force, and its power was so fierce that it directly threw Mirajan up and a full hundred meters away. Not only that, even distant ships were not spared. The originally calm sea became rough at this moment, and the waves rolled like a pot of boiling water. 
The strong wind howled, making it almost impossible for everyone to stand. They leaned down and lay tightly on the swaying deck, just barely able to stabilize their bodies and avoid being blown away by the strong wind. When everything settled, everyone stood up. With the help of the remaining flames, they could see that the original tower had long since disappeared. Even the corner of the island where the tower was located had disappeared without a trace. At this moment, everyone looked at the young man wrapped in golden aura in the air, full of helplessness. The name of tyrant is really not wrong at all. This temper is too violent. What's even more terrifying is that he still has corresponding strength. If they messed with such a guy, they would probably be ashamed of themselves. No. Miliana. Hugh. Wally. Simon. Urza looked at the destroyed Tower of Heaven and knelt down at the bow of the ship. Is it still too late? Urza lowered her head, tears flowing uncontrollably. Help. The next moment, a faint cry for help came, and Urza was stunned for a moment. She immediately lay down on the side of the ship and looked at the sea below. At this moment, Miliana and the others were rolling their eyes and floating on the sea foaming at the mouth. The powerful explosion just now knocked them unconscious, and they finally recovered. When I saw this big boat, I quickly called for help. Miliana. Wally. Simon. Urza exclaimed in great surprise, isn't that right? Where is Zio? Meow, turned over. Miliana looked at the turned over ice cube aside. Zio's head was now under the surface of the sea, and he was constantly drinking seawater. Hurry and save people. Following Urza's call, everyone rescued Miliana and the others. As for Hugh, it's hanging on the side of the boat to dry. It'll be fine after the water has drained out. It's so, refreshing. Cheng Feng combed his hair with one hand and put his hair back. He looked at the destroyed Tower of Heaven below and felt happy. With the disappearance of the Tower of Heaven, Cheng Feng also felt that the obsession that had been restricting him in his body finally disappeared. At this moment, he was finally reborn. What he could feel most intuitively was the surge in magic power. If it were in the past, this blow would probably drain the magic power out of his body. But now, the magic power has increased by at least half. And the speed of returning to magic is extremely fast. In just a few minutes, his magic power has been restored to one-fifth of the amount. So good. Cheng Feng laughed heartily, and the laughter spread with the sea breeze. Everyone who heard it could feel the joy and joy in the laughter. But the next moment, a roar resounded through the sky, and six magic stars flashed and shot towards the Cheng Feng in midair. Jello. Ultir looked up at the fighting place, and then couldn't help shouting, Come on. Beat that hard. At this moment, Ultir was tied into a caterpillar and could only move forward on the ground. She wanted to run, but Cheng Feng placed a barrier around her. Moreover, this barrier is so strong that it withstood the blast wave once, and the Ultir inside did not suffer any damage at all. In this regard, Ultir was a little desperate. Now, she doesn't ask for anything else, she just wants Jellal to be stronger and give Cheng Feng a good beating to make her angry. As for winning, Ultir is still very self-aware, and Jellal is very talented, but his talent is not worth mentioning in front of today's tyrants. Therefore, Ultir would be satisfied if he could punch Cheng Feng. I almost forgot, there's you too. Cheng Feng looked at the attack coming towards him and swung his sword suddenly. The ice dragon roared out and swallowed up the opponent's attack in one bite. Meteor. The next moment, a figure rushed out. There was a tattoo on his right eye. The boy with short sky blue hair punched Cheng Feng. Give you face. Cheng Feng rushed out, the golden aura on his body instantly surged, and the surrounding area was filled with wisps of electric light. His black hair instantly turned into upside down blonde hair. Cheng Feng rushed towards the opponent as fast as lightning. Without using any skills, relying solely on his physical combat ability, he punched Jellal in the face more than a dozen times. Jellal fell like a meteor and hit the ground hard. Drink. Cheng Feng turned his finger into a sword and raised it suddenly. The burst of magic power was like a hurricane, which directly caused the ground on the surface of the island to fly away. Jellal, who had fallen on the ground, also flew up. Seven Star Sword. Like the seven magical light pillars of the Big Dipper, they lit up and fell from the sky in an instant, rushing towards Cheng Feng. Turtle-style Qigong. Cheng Feng gathered his hands together, and after the magic power was gathered, 
Cheng Feng blasted out, and a blue shock wave hit the Seven Star Sword and swallowed it directly. Nine Thunder Stars. Jellal gritted his teeth, gathered his hands together, and suddenly erupted. The powerful magic star rushed towards the turtle Qigong, but it only blocked it for a moment before being blown away by the turtle Qigong. He relied on the meteor to avoid it, but the next moment, a figure flashed in front of him, and Cheng Feng suddenly appeared in front of Jellal. Brainwashing, right. With one punch, Jellal flew backwards like a doll. Freedom, right. The next moment, Cheng Feng appeared again and punched out again, causing Jellal to fly backwards again. Resurrect Zirf, right. Flashed again, followed by a punch and flew away again. Pa, pa, pa. Everyone stared at the astonishing scene in front of them with their mouths open. I saw Jellal being blown away like a kite with its string broken. Every time before he could stabilize his body and prepare to counterattack, Cheng Feng took action as quickly as lightning and blasted him out again. Jellal was knocked away again and again, as if he had turned into a doll at the mercy of others, completely losing his ability to resist. Ultir in the barrier couldn't help but swallowed when he saw this scene. She knew that the scene she was looking forward to would probably never happen. Just when he was thinking this, he heard a sudden explosion, and Jellal hit him hard in front of him. Jellal, who was beaten into a pig's head by Cheng Feng, fell to the ground, unable to move at all. The strong shock and humiliation swept through Jalal's heart. Tears streamed from the corners of his eyes, and he choked and said, I was wrong. I was wrong. Stop fighting. I admit defeat. Stop hitting me. I never want to be free again. I never want Zirf anymore. Woo hoo hoo. Cheng Feng fell to the ground, the golden aura on his body dissipated, and returned to his original appearance. Ultir looked at Jellal who was beaten and crying, feeling uncomfortable in his heart. After having been brainwashed for so long, why not give Cheng Feng a quick beating to get rid of it? Why are you working so hard? Cheng Feng, are you okay? Mirajan, who is in the receiving state of Satan's soul, flew over, her magic power was exhausted, and the exhausted Mirajan fell directly with a cry of surprise. Be careful. Cheng Feng dodged and appeared next to Mirajan, hugging Mirajan into a princess hug. Mirajan was stunned for a moment, as if this was the first time Cheng Feng was willing to touch her so intimately. Cheng Feng. At this time, Makarov also rushed over aggressively with members of the Fairy Tale Guild. Seeing Cheng Feng catching Mirajan, Makarov also breathed a sigh of relief. But then, Makarov frowned, stepped forward and knocked Cheng Feng on the forehead with a knife. Pain. The blow was extremely severe, and the pain went straight to the tear ducts, so even Cheng Feng burst into tears after being hit. It's such a big fuss. Looking at Cheng Feng who was crying, Makarov frowned and said. I know, but I'm comfortable. Cheng Feng grinned, with tears streaming down his face, which was a bit funny. Makarov sighed, Cheng Feng meant that he knew he was wrong, but he would not change it. I guess you'll be arrested for a while. Be mentally prepared. The S-level exam is about to begin. Well, it looks like I won't be able to help this year. You. Dot hey, forget it. Seeing Cheng Feng's dead pig not afraid of boiling water, what can Makarov do? They are all their own children, so they can only be pampered. Makarov was right to be concerned. When the group returned to the dock in Magnolia, Cheng Feng and Jellal were captured, put in chains and taken away. As for Ultir, it was hidden for the time being. After all, this guy's transformation magic was very good. Moreover, Makarov had a plan and needed Ultir's help, so he hid it. And Miliana and the others, after understanding the previous causes and consequences, and then seeing Cheng Feng's strength, they no longer have a rebellious stage. But just like the original plot, they thought they didn't have the face to face Urza, so they decided to travel and see different scenery. Urza also saw them off. This matter has also come to an end. The criminal Jellal Fernandez is guilty of contacting dangerous magic, abusing magic and other crimes and will be punished concurrently. However, he pleads guilty and has a good attitude. He is sentenced to four years in prison and will be executed immediately. In the court of the Magic Council, Jellal stood there in chains and listened to his verdict. He breathed a sigh of relief and then looked at his drowsy peer next to him. Not only did he see it, but many judges, including the jury, also discovered this. Makarov sat in the jury chair, covered his face with one hand and said, It's so shameful. 
The jury around him just looked at him silently, thinking that you, a guy who can sleep in the courtroom, have no right to criticize others. Dong dong dong. The presiding judge knocked the wooden hammer hard, waking up Cheng Feng who was almost asleep. Cheng Feng yawned and smacked his lips, looking up at the presiding judge and saying, is it my turn? Seeing Cheng Feng's appearance, the presiding judge was not angry to death, but he kept complaining in his heart, stop it. Hold it. The fairy tale guild is like this, you must hold it back. Ahem. After coughing a few times, the presiding judge picked up the copy, looked at Cheng Feng and said, fairy tale guild Chen Feng caused an island to be destroyed due to excessive use of magic. He also deserves some credit for destroying the R system. So, sentence Cheng Feng to four months of confinement, reflect on it, and execute it immediately. Four months is too long, why don't you reduce it? Cheng Feng looked at the presiding judge and spoke in a consultative tone. The presiding judge's forehead was throbbing with veins. He looked at Cheng Feng and gritted his teeth and said, no need to discuss. If you say one more thing, you will be held in contempt of court and sentenced to two more months of confinement. Cut. Cheng Feng looked unhappy, but he was taken down obediently. After leaving the trial court, he met Makarov who came out. Makarov walked up to Cheng Feng, patted him on the shoulder and said, just in time, I'll take this opportunity to have a good rest and adjust my mentality. After saying that, Makarov leaned close to Cheng Feng's ear and whispered, there is another purpose for confining you this time. You have great potential, and the Magic Council plans to recruit you. It will be good for you to work hard to join the ranks of Saint Ten. Cheng Feng nodded, and Makarov patted Cheng Feng's shoulder again before turning and leaving. Cheng Feng was taken to the solitary room. As the iron door was opened, Cheng Feng walked into the solitary room and suddenly found that it was not bad here. Small living room, single bedroom, separate bathroom, and even a small kitchen. Speaking of confinement, Cheng Feng felt that apart from not being able to move around freely, it was actually no different from a vacation. The iron gate was closed, and Cheng Feng also started his life of confinement. There is nothing uncomfortable. I draw cards when I have nothing to do, exercise my body and use magic power, and rest and sleep when I am tired. On a whim, I shouted outside to get some ingredients and started cooking by myself. Life in confinement is quite enjoyable. As for the holy ten qualifications mentioned by Makarov, Cheng Feng is not in a hurry. Since there is such a sign, the other party will definitely come to him. Even if you don't come looking for me, once the four-month confinement life is over, you can just pat your butt and leave, and it won't be a big deal. Just two months later, Cheng Feng spent the new year in the solitary room, and the time came to the year 780. Early that morning, Crawford Him, the speaker of the Magic Council, a chubby old man with a big beard, came to the solitary room and found Cheng Feng. Crawford said to Cheng Feng amiably, are you used to living here? Not bad. Cheng Feng chuckled and responded. Crawford still smiled and said, that guy Makarov, I should have told you, there is still a vacancy for the Holy Ten Mage position in our Magic Council. Are you interested in taking it? I'm interested. If I take the position, what do I need to pay? Cheng Feng got straight to the point and looked at Crawford. Crawford's smile widened. He just likes to communicate with smart people. And Cheng Feng also laughed, because he knew very well that the old man in front of him looked amiable, but in fact he had an extreme desire for power and desire. Crawford is obsessed with his status as the Speaker of the Magic Council, and the Magic Council, as the largest law enforcement agency in the continent of Ishgar, provides him with great conveniences. Therefore, what he wants is very simple, that is, support for him so that he can sit more firmly. But Cheng Feng saw it more clearly. Anyway, the Magic Council would be destroyed several times in the future. The so-called location was basically a loft in the sky. After that, the old guy would also die. Now that Xu and Wu are dealing with it, the convenience they gain is their own. As for the constraints of the Holy Ten. Have you seen Makarov offend these people? The news that Cheng Feng became ten wizard saints spread like the wind to the entire kingdom. Many people were confused by such a rapid and unexpected situation, and only a few people who knew the inside story understood the reason. But no matter what, because of this incident, Cheng Feng's reputation was completely opened up. He even once ranked among the magicians who want to have a boyfriend, 
in some magazines, jumping to the top of the list. Rich, handsome, and powerful. Except for being too young, it's perfect. But as for age, just wait. Many old aunties are already eager to try it. However, Cheng Feng himself didn't care about these, for he didn't have the opportunity to understand them. Because his confinement time is not over yet. After all, the Magic Council also wants to lose face. If it says four months, it will be four months. Even the newly promoted Holy Ten is the same. Cheng Feng didn't care, after all, the life in confinement was more relaxed. The confinement room had completely become his residence. He could go out for a walk if he had nothing to do. The library of the Magic Council was also open to him. In it, Cheng Feng found many unique books. The magic book contains some relatively rare magical knowledge. Time passed so quietly, and the four months of confinement were all over. Those who live in Cheng Feng don't want to leave, but the time has come, so they can only wait for the next opportunity to come back. After closing the magic book, Cheng Feng picked up the cloak representing the Holy Ten and put it on his body, and then left the Senate after being respectfully seen off by the members of the Senate. The body slowly floated up, Cheng Feng's whole body was wrapped with golden aura, and he suddenly flew towards Magnolia. Magnolia, Fairy Tale Guild. Cheng Feng landed slowly and opened the guild door, I'm back. A shout announced Cheng Feng's return to the guild. But the guild, which used to be lively, was particularly deserted today. Makarov, who was sitting on the counter drinking sullenly, glanced at Cheng Feng, forced a smile and said, welcome home. What's wrong? The atmosphere feels weird. Cheng Feng frowned and looked around at the people who were just drinking silently. The entire guild seemed extremely quiet. Cheng Feng. Urza stood up. Her tone was a little low. She gritted her teeth as she watched Cheng Feng, and finally said, Listen, a passed away. Cheng Feng was stunned. It took him a long time to react. He couldn't help but pick his ears and said with a smile, It seems there is something wrong with my ears. Cheng Feng. Makarov sat on the counter and said seriously, you heard it right, Lisina is dead, Mirajan and Elfman are in the cemetery of Cardia Cathedral. Makarov's voice was choked up, and he couldn't say the next words. Don't make fun of me. Cheng Feng suddenly roared angrily, I showed Lisina her face. She is not a short-lived face, and even if there is a problem, it will be two years later. There is no way that there will be a problem now. After saying that, Cheng Feng turned around and ran towards the Cardia Cathedral. President. Let him be. Makarov took a sip of wine and shook his head. When his own child dies, as an elder, he feels more distressed than anyone else. It began to rain lightly in the sky, and the cold rain quickly wet Cheng Feng's clothes and hair. He did not fly, but ran all the way to the cemetery of Cardia Cathedral. In the cemetery at this moment, Mirajan and Elfman were both wearing black clothes. Elfman was holding an umbrella to protect Mirajan from the rain, while he himself was soaked by the cold rain. Mirajan was in a trance, squatting there, reaching out and slowly touching the tombstone in front of her. At the top of the tombstone is the fairy tale guild coat of arms, with Lysina's name underneath and the words X768X780 engraved on it. Da da da. The sound of footsteps sounded, Mirajan turned her head and saw Cheng Feng walking towards them. Cheng Feng. Mirajan stood up, rushed up with a quick stride, hugged Cheng Feng tightly, and buried her head in Cheng Feng's arms. Even though he was soaked to the skin, Cheng Feng could still feel the hot tears dripping from his arms. What happened? Cheng Feng held Mirajan and looked at Elfman, who had a scar on his right face, with a cold tone. Blame me. With tears streaming down his face, Elfman knelt on the ground and said repentantly, Sister, I tried my best, but I was too weak and couldn't suppress it. It's all my fault for being too weak. Hearing the somewhat familiar process, Cheng Feng was stunned. He pulled Mirajan out of his arms, stared into her eyes and said, You went to conquer the Beast King. Cheng Feng remembered that Lisina's death happened because these three people went to defeat the Beast King. But this should obviously happen after Mirajan is promoted to an S-class mage two years later. We are not going to defeat the Beast King. We are just going to complete a cleanup commission. But in the process, we met the Beast King. I accepted the demon god Halfas, but the magic power was not enough. Elfman then forcibly collected the soul of the Beast King and fell into a rampage. Listen up. Dot she just wants to wake up Elfman. 
Mirajan spoke intermittently, but Cheng Feng also understood the whole process. Although there is a two-year difference in time, the process can be said to be very similar. Cheng Feng reacted and immediately asked, Where are Lisana's bones? Are there any bones? After hearing Cheng Feng's words, Mirajan and Elfman shook their heads together. When Cheng Feng saw this, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. After asking for details again, Cheng Feng was also sure that Lisana was not dead. Just like in the plot, she was sucked in by the fool. You must know that in a slant, there are many small scale that are constantly absorbing magic power at this stage. After so many years of hard work by Mistogan, these small were shut down, and by the time of the plot, Edelis had made a big one. Do not worry. Cheng Feng touched Mirajan's face and smiled gently at her. I can assure you that Lisana is not dead. The relationship is a bit complicated. You can understand that Lisana went to fairy tale in another parallel world. I can't come back for the time being, but I promise you, Lisana will definitely come back in less than five years, believe me. Mirajan nodded and hugged Cheng Feng. Elfman also felt much better after hearing Cheng Feng's words. But he also silently vowed at this moment that he would definitely become stronger and not let this tragedy happen again. Go home. Cheng Feng hugged Mirajan and said, everyone in the guild is probably not feeling well at this moment. We also want to tell everyone this news so that everyone will not be depressed. Um. Mirajan nodded. A group of three people walked towards the guild together, and the light rain in the sky stopped at this moment. The dark clouds dispersed, and bright light once again shrouded the land. Listen as matter came to an end. Although many people in the guild did not believe Cheng Feng's words, Makarov did. The plot went awry, so Cheng Feng also started asking Makarov to see if anything happened to Fairy Tail during the four months since he disappeared. Cheng Feng was also stunned by this question. The first is that Laxus successfully promoted to S-Class Wizard, a year earlier than in the original plot. But this is acceptable. After all, Laxus has changed so much. Whether it is an improvement in strength or Makarov's recognition, it is normal for Laxus to advance a year earlier than in the plot. There is another one, which is about Ultir. Ultir joins Fairy Tail. This surprised Cheng Feng. But considering that Uru was taken to Fairy Tail by him, Ultir is no different. Then Ultir returned to Grimoire Heart, but this time she went back as a spy. She also completely rebelled and continuously provided Makarov with news about Grimoire Heart. Cheng Feng still admires Makarov on this point. I don't know what methods he has. Ultir is like this, and future Gajil is like this. In this regard, Cheng Feng can only say that if he wants to inherit the fourth generation, he still has a long way to go. As for the plot, a lot has changed so far. Cheng Feng didn't feel much at all. Although the changes in the plot will lead to big deviations in the future, Cheng Feng believes that as long as he is strong enough, his punches are hard enough, and his sword is sharp enough, he can handle it no matter how it changes. He even had the idea of abducting Lucy directly into the guild and forcibly starting the plot. But Lucy's father, Jude, is a stubborn old man and probably won't go as he wishes. But just when Cheng Feng was about to abandon this idea and thought that he would not interact with the other party in a short time, an invitation letter disrupted Cheng Feng's thoughts. It's already the end of June, and the weather is getting hotter. Cheng Feng had just completed a small commission. When he returned to the guild, Makarov handed Cheng Feng an invitation letter. Dinner party. Cheng Feng looked at the information on the invitation letter and was stunned for a moment. Then he looked at the inviter column and discovered that the name written on it was Jude Hartfilia's name. It's strange. Why did this old guy send me an invitation letter? We have nothing to do with each other, right? Cheng Feng was a little confused, but because he wanted to see Lucy and see if there was any chance of taking her to fairy tale, Cheng Feng decided to go there. Attending the dinner party, Mirajan, who is wearing a dress with her bangs tied up with a rubber band and her smooth forehead exposed, looked at Cheng Feng and said with a smile, then let me choose a dress for you. Okay. Cheng Feng nodded. After the Lisana incident, just like in the plot, both Mirajan and Elfman became familiar to Cheng Feng. However, due to Cheng Feng's intervention, Mirajan did not remain silent and was still active in commission work. However, now, she also occasionally works part-time as a guild girl's waiter. 
Also because of Lisina's incident, the relationship between Mirajan and Cheng Feng has also become better. Coupled with the lack of obsession, although Cheng Feng did not directly become boyfriend and girlfriend with Mirajan, others could tell at a glance that the relationship between the two was much closer. The two of them are getting along in a way that they feel comfortable with. Maybe one day, if the two of them announce their engagement or marriage, no one in the guild will be surprised at all. Mirajan was very considerate and took Cheng Feng to a clothing store. She chose a more formal set of sky blue suits and trousers, and used magic to adjust the size for a better fit. Paired with Cheng Feng's strong body and handsome face, I have to say, it looks perfect. Cheng Feng looked in the mirror, nodded, and asked the clerk to wrap it up. Then looking at Mirajan who was still choosing clothes with great interest, Cheng Feng motioned to the clerk to give Mirajan several sets of evening dresses. After Mirajan saw them, she went to try on a sky blue evening dress and a white evening dress with a smile. Paired with Mirajan's gradually growing figure, I have to say that it is very eye-catching at first glance. Holding my nose, Cheng Feng went shopping for a while. Although the price was a little expensive, Cheng Feng felt it was worth it to satisfy my eyes. The day after buying the dress, Cheng Feng took the train and finally arrived at Hartfilia Mansion Station feeling sleepy and yawning all the way. Well, you read that right, the Hartfilia Mansion alone is a station by itself. After all, we are engaged in railways, so we can still get this privilege. In addition, the land area Jude buys is large enough, and it is easy to set up a platform. After getting off the platform, Cheng Feng stretched. Outside the platform stood an ant in a maid uniform. When she saw Cheng Feng coming, she smiled at Cheng Feng and said, Are you the new Ten Wizard Saints, Mr. Cheng Feng? Well, there's no need to call me that. I'm still young. Auntie can just call me Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng waved his hand and felt strange that the other party called him that. Mr. Cheng Feng is really approachable. The ant said with a smile, Please come with me. The dinner will be held at the Hartfilia mansion. Cheng Feng was helpless for a while and could only accept the other party's title. I followed Auntie into a car, and under the guidance of the driver, I passed through a courtyard the size of a town, and finally arrived at the Hartfilia mansion. After getting off the car, Cheng Feng looked at the huge manor building in front of him at night. While admiring him, he couldn't help but murmur, how many people would be required to clean such a big house every day. Soon, Cheng Feng knew. The maids of the Hartfilia mansion lined up in two rows to greet guests arriving for the dinner party. Cheng Feng glanced briefly and saw that there were more than 50 maids in his sight. Coupled with drivers, chefs, gardeners, guards, and even some magic teachers, Cheng Feng conservatively estimated that the Hartfilia family would need to hire hundreds of people to complete the operation of the entire manor. The most evil rich man. Cheng Feng complained that although he is now a rich man, compared to such rich people, his little money is really not enough. Entering the building, Cheng Feng was also dazzled by the magnificent decoration inside. There is a sense of low-key luxury. Although it is not Cheng Feng's style, it is the style that some people like. For example, there is a small circle on the left side of Cheng Feng. Seven or eight people gather together, communicate with each other, and taste the architecture and the red wine that is served. Looking at their gorgeous clothes, it is not difficult to tell that they come from wealthy families. Unfortunately, Cheng Feng was not interested in communicating with them. He picked up a glass of red wine and walked to the snack table to eat. Tisk, lowly civilians. The way Cheng Feng was feasting was also seen by many people present, who looked at Cheng Feng with some disgust. But soon, when they learned Cheng Feng's identity, the disgust on their faces disappeared. But still disdainful of Cheng Feng. After all, none of them are worth tens of billions. What is the use of a ten wizard saint besides using their name to bluff people? If something really happened, they waved their money, and these magicians would surround them like dogs. Others' cold looks and disdain are of no use to Cheng Feng. They laughed at Cheng Feng for being vulgar, and Cheng Feng laughed at them for wanting to save face and suffer. Why are you pretending? After the dinner, everyone went back to get some midnight snacks to fill their stomachs. He didn't believe that these guys went back and went hungry without eating. Are you tired of being constrained by rules and regulations? Wouldn't it be better to live more freely? Hey, wait, give me some juice. Cheng Feng took a sip of red wine and almost spit it out. 
It smells okay, but why does it feel sour and astringent after one sip? Cheng Feng quickly stopped a maid and was about to change her mouth with a glass of juice. The little maid was stopped by Cheng Feng. She lowered her head and watched Cheng Feng replace the red wine with juice with a look of disgust on her face. She said softly, Guest, this is the red wine that our Miss Lucy brewed herself. It is specially brought out to entertain you. Of. Oh, so what? Cheng Feng took a sip of the juice and said with disdain, It's very fragrant, but it's sour and astringent and doesn't taste good at all. I might as well drink juice. Hearing Cheng Feng belittle Lucy without hesitation, the little maid raised her head and glanced at Cheng Feng. Cheng Feng also glanced at the other party. Inexplicably, he felt that the little maid in front of him looked familiar. After thinking for a while, Cheng Feng finally realized, looks familiar. Could this little girl be Lucy? Cheng Feng guessed correctly, the person in front of him dressed as a maid was none other than Lucy Hartfilia. Lucy knew that her father held this dinner party just to treat herself as a commodity and put it out for display. At the same time, we are also looking to see if any company is willing to enter into a marriage, so that it can be used to increase the business and expansion of Hartfilia Railway. Lucy couldn't help it, but she also thought of something that she could resist now. That is to take out the grape wine that I once brewed and discuss these people. Seeing these people pretending to taste the red wine even though they knew the product was not good, Lucy was filled with the pleasure of revenge. But it is obvious that Cheng Feng does not accept this trick. Lucy looked at the dress that Cheng Feng was wearing, which looked okay, but an insider could tell at a glance that it was not a custom-made dress by a celebrity. She thought quickly in her head, and then said, You are the new Ten Wizard Saints, Cheng Mr. Feng. Don't use honorifics, it makes me uncomfortable. Cheng Feng shivered and said to Lucy, I'm about the same age as you, just call me Cheng Feng. Okay, Cheng Feng. Lucy laughed, looked at Cheng Feng and said, Cheng Feng, you magicians are very free, aren't you? Free. Cheng Feng took a sip of juice and said with a smile, it depends on your definition of freedom. The world is a cage. Dancing in the cage is also a kind of freedom. Breaking free from the cage is also a kind of freedom. Looking at Lucy who was thoughtful, Cheng Feng struck while the iron was hot. Hartfilia's family is very rich, but I feel very restricted here. Everyone wears a mask to communicate, and everything is for profit. Compared with here, I like our guild better. Although compared to Hartfilia's house, it is definitely very poor, but everyone works hard to make money, and it is usually noisy. But I like it better there, because it is more like a home. Everyone can be their truest selves. At this point, Cheng Feng looked embarrassed and said to Lucy, Of course, I'm not belittling the Hartfilia family. Don't take it to heart. Lucy shook her head and said it was okay, but only she knew how much Cheng Feng's words shocked her and planted a seed in her heart. This seed will eventually grow and sprout, and Lucy will eventually follow her mother's path and become a wizard. Being a rich young lady, marrying and having children for the sake of industry, that is not the life Lucy wants. Lucy left, and Jude also came out, said some polite words, and then toasted to each guest. Cheng Feng watched silently, preparing to sneak away first when it was almost done. Such an occasion is really uncomfortable. After Jude paid his respects, he came to Cheng Feng, raised his glass and smiled at Cheng Feng. Welcome, Ten Wizard Saints Cheng Feng. I don't drink, so I drink fruit juice instead. Cheng Feng raised his glass to Jude and said calmly. Sure. Jude had a drink with Cheng Feng, put down the glass, and said to Cheng Feng, Actually, the main reason I invite you here is to let you witness my little girl's birthday. She has always liked magic, and I am very grateful for your busy schedule. Come over. It's okay, just by the way. Cheng Feng looked at Jude and said calmly, but I feel like it's not just that simple, right? I really can't hide it from you. Jude laughed and said to Cheng Feng, I heard that Cheng Feng has a pharmacy business. Yes, you want to get involved. Cheng Feng calmly took a sip of juice. No, 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 I don't have your ability. Jude waved his hand and said, but it is a pity that such a good potion is sold so cheaply. If you leave it to me, I guarantee you that your commission for each bottle of potion will be at least doubled. As far as I know, the Hartfilia family shouldn't have any relevant industrial chain, right? Cheng Feng smiled slightly. Everything comes from scratch. Jude also laughed. 
if you are willing to cooperate, then my daughter can also marry you, and we will become bigger and stronger together. Looking at the other party's smile, Cheng Feng's smile faded and he said coldly, but I refuse. Jude's smiling face suddenly stiffened. One of my favorite things, Cheng Feng, is to say no to guys who think they are capable. Cheng Feng looked at Jude and said coldly, Besides, I don't think that a person who can sell his daughter to seek wealth is a person who can be trusted. After saying that, Cheng Feng put the finished cup on the table, looked at the livid Jude and said, Sometimes, things are not right what you think is right. If you really want to do the best for your daughter, just do more listen to her opinion. Thank you for your hospitality. This place is not suitable for me. After saying that, Cheng Feng tugged on his tie, ignored Jude and strode out of the Hartfilia mansion. After receiving it, the golden aura on his body surged, the surging magic power exploded, and the strong air waves blew the guests at the banquet to and fro. When he looked at Cheng Feng, he found that he had disappeared, and there was only a flash of golden light on the horizon, telling everyone what had just happened. Wake up! A soft hand gently knocked on Cheng Feng's forehead, awakening Cheng Feng from his deep sleep. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw Mirajan's smiling face. Did you come back late yesterday? Mirajan looked at Cheng Feng who sat up and asked. Well, I met an annoying person, which made me a little unhappy. Cheng Feng scratched his hair, yawned and said, besides, I came back late, so I slept a little longer. No wonder, why didn't I see you in the guild? Mirajan looked back at the bedroom window, which was open at the moment. Cheng Feng got up and walked towards the bathroom. Wearing only a pair of underwear, he exposed his muscular figure. Mirajan's eyes grew hot when she saw it, she rubbed her red face and said to Cheng Feng, by the way, there's a new S-class commission. The reward is very interesting. You can give it a try. I'm going to the guild first. Quote. Mirajan said hello and was about to leave. Remember to go through the main door. Cheng Feng walked out of the bathroom with a toothbrush stuffed in his mouth and said something to the bedroom. But in the empty bedroom, there is no trace of Mirajan anywhere. These guys are used to walking through windows, right? Cheng Feng shook his head helplessly, then returned to the bathroom to wash up before getting dressed and heading to the guild. On the second floor of the guild, in front of the commission column where S-level commission orders were placed alone, Cheng Feng looked at the newly posted commission in trance. It's a bit interesting to actually take this thing out as a reward. Cheng Feng looked at the words marked on the remuneration column and laughed. Because it says, the reward is a dragon slaying magic crystal. This thing is a rarity. Look at Laxus, how much his strength has improved after installing a piece of Thunder Dragon Slayer magic crystal. And even if this thing were to be sold, a conservative estimate would cost 70 million J to guarantee it. To be able to get something like this as a reward, naturally the difficulty of this commission is also amazing. Don't look at it. This mission should be for me. Laxus looked at Cheng Feng looking at the commission and smiled proudly. Because this commission requires sneaking into Thunder Marsh to collect a special herb called Thunder Marsh Flower. It seems very simple, but it is actually extremely difficult. First of all, the Thunder Swamp is located in a place called the Blight Swamp, which is filled with miasma all year round and is quite toxic. There are also a large number of poisonous creatures with the strength of S-class monsters living in it. Some people may say, just stay away and stay away. But what's more troublesome is that the time when the Thunder Marsh flowers bloom happens to be when the creatures in the Withered Swamp are in estrus. At this time, the Withered Swamp is full of creatures with red eyes due to heat. Breaking in rashly is definitely the result of a group attack. There is no second possibility. After the beasts break through the outer perimeter and reach the Thunder Marsh, what awaits them is a Thunder Marsh formed by a high concentration of thunder elements. Generally, S-class magicians would not dare to touch it easily, otherwise they would be blown to pieces by the thunder in the thunder swamp if they were not careful. Even a magician who uses thunder magic will be tortured for half his life when faced with such a high concentration of thunder marshes. Only when you reach the bottom of the thunder marsh can you pick the thunder marsh flowers, which have a flowering period of only three minutes. Looking at it this way, it seems that only Laxus, the dragon slayer of thunder, can swallow thunder and sneak into the bottom of the thunder marsh to wait for the thunder marsh flower to bloom while ensuring that he is not killed. 
The commission is timely, and it will be taken off the shelves directly on the 7th. Cheng Feng looked at the commission and said, In other words, the thunder marsh flower will bloom during this period. If it is missed, the commission will be considered a failure. The difficulty lies in time. Yes, so do you want to form a team? Laxus looked at Cheng Feng and said, I will be responsible for picking, and you will be responsible for cleaning up the monsters. No, I can handle it. Cheng Feng refused directly, accepted the commission, and went to the counter to report. Do you want to do this commission? Makarov looked at Cheng Feng with a hint of confusion. There happens to be a useful heroic soul, and I'm also quite interested in the Dragon Slayer magic crystal. I can bring it over and study it. Cheng Feng said with a smile. Makarov pondered for a moment, and then said to Cheng Feng, Be careful, it doesn't matter if you can't finish it, do you understand? No. After the registration was completed, Cheng Feng left the guild directly. After receiving the information, he used the air dance technique to quickly fly towards the client's location. Arrive. Cheng Feng descended slowly and landed in a small town near the withered swamp. After searching for a while, Cheng Feng finally saw his client in a small wooden house on the edge of town. At first glance, the client looked like a typical evil old wizard, but as the conversation progressed, Cheng Feng discovered that he was quite easy to talk to and had a kind personality. As for the Thunder Marsh flower, it is also to make a special potion that can quickly treat broken limbs. I don't have much money, but if you can bring back the Thunder Marsh flower, this dragon-slaying magic crystal will be yours. Adrian, who looked a little evil, took out a piece of grey crystal and said to Cheng Feng, Of course, I won't force it. I know how difficult it is to obtain the Thunder Marsh flower. I just ask you to do your best. Don't worry, since I took it, I will definitely complete it. Cheng Feng said with a smile. I believe this. I still believe in the name of the tyrant of goblins. Adrian smiled, but it was accompanied by this face, which made people feel malicious no matter how he looked at it. Reminding himself again not to judge books by their appearance, Cheng Feng bid farewell to Adrian and headed to the Blight Swamp. The entire withered swamp is filled with a layer of mist, which seems harmless to humans and animals, but it contains relatively strong toxins. After Cheng Feng approached the Blight Swamp, he put on a backup card. The prisoner of delicious food, Coco, the four heavenly kings. Coco itself has a poisonous body, and the gourmet cells in the body can also absorb the deadly poison in the shortest possible time and prepare suitable antibodies. After receiving the card, the poison of the blight swamp no longer caused any interference to Cheng Feng. The only troublesome thing is that in this way, the Coco card occupies one of Cheng Feng's receiving positions, and he can only receive three cards. Ouch. Moo. Ouch. Ho ho ho. Various beast roars came from his ears. Spring. Ah. Even in the middle of summer, it cannot stop the urge to mate after the creatures in the withered swamp enter the estrus period. The aggressiveness of male creatures has increased at least three to four times at this moment. Once a creature approaches, they will immediately default to being a challenger and attack you without hesitation. Walking to heaven. Cheng Feng looked at the sky, but the supervision brought to him by the Coco card allowed him to see the electromagnetic waves floating in the sky, and a death appearance, like a skeleton gradually emerged. Cheng Feng was a little confused. Even with his own strength, he would die if he walked in the sky. How is this going? Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.